Community Radio supports great Australian music and new musicians as well. And, and City Park Radio likes to promote our Tassie talent as well. From Olverston, that's Alaska Dry and Pretty Face. 19 minutes past two. Good Friday afternoon, a sunny afternoon. We should reach our top temperature. I think the top temperature should be about 25 this afternoon. A short while ago it was 24. I'll check it in you know, very shortly. Here's Philip Oakey and Giorgio Moroda. Hello, welcome here to Windsor Park. A bit of background music. On the, uh, on the call. Beautiful day here in uh, Launceston today. Testing, testing. One, two, three. Got the test. One, two, one, two. Check, check, check. Get a bit fiery. Get a bit. <laughs> I can't get fiery for nothing. <laughs> Fuzzy will fire up. Yes. Hello. Certainly will. It's uh, the curtain raised today. It was North Launceston 18 17 125 defeated Launceston 4 3 27. Buzz in the background. Yeah, I don't know how to fix that at the moment. Yeah. We're going to pack spare ones this year.
25 minutes past two. This sports broadcast is brought to you by Elgas for all your LPG needs. Talk to the locals with knowledge. Elgas, call 13 11 61, a sponsor of City Park Radio. Welcome to Windsor Park in Launceston. It's the start of the 2024 Tasmanian State League season. It's the last season of State League footy before we have a new structure in 2025. It's going to be an exciting season, and we kick it off as we usually do uh, with a big match here at Windsor Park on Good Friday. And it's Launceston versus North Launceston, the two traditional northern rivals. In commentary with me this afternoon, just to my left here, it's uh, my old faithful servant of many years, our 12th season macker. Uh, it's Matthew McGee. Yeah, good afternoon, Foz, and good afternoon to all our listeners, and happy Easter to everyone. It's a beautiful uh, day here at Windsor Park. That Windsor Park looks an absolute treat, and uh, I think we're going to be in for a pretty good contest. Um, there's a lot of different si- different players in both sides today. Uh, Launceston are uh, very young and probably a, little, a lot more inexperienced than North Launceston, but we'll see how they go. And also in the special comments chair this afternoon uh, from AFL Tasmania. He's had a long association with uh, the Devils and junior footy development uh, in North Tasmania. G'day, Nathan Warren. Hello, lads. Happy to be here. Looking forward to a good game. Absolutely, mate. What a cracking day. I don't think I've seen Windsor Park in better condition. It's looking great. Absolutely. We'll get some more information on that. Uh, we've got our boundary riders down there. We've got Tony and Chris right in the middle of Windsor Park. Good afternoon, boys. How's conditions down there on the surface? Uh, it's a little bit windy at the moment. The ground itself is... Uh, very, very good condition as you can see there's no bare patches around they've done a good job over the summer but the wind is sort of blowing up towards the tan end a little bit across the ground um, just for what it's worth I tend to think North are going to win this by about five goals here's Chris yeah look I think we should be saying whoever wins this toss is going to bat first and uh, a quick outfield beautiful ground it's almost like a cricket pitch here it's just amazing uh, uh, 24 degrees which is about our maximum for the day and we're just about to uh, toss here Brodie Palfreyman and Alex Lee. Going to go for the toss here. We'll see who's going to win the toss. And it's uh, North Launceston have won the toss. They're going to kick with the wind to the southern end. So it's a beautiful day down here. I think we're in for a big game. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Tony. We'll talk to you uh, throughout the day. Uh, Macro, obviously a lot of changes in the off-season, especially to the Launceston Football Club. Uh, how are you seeing the game today? Yeah, look, Launceston, uh, as we mentioned, have got... Um, a lot of players out of their side, they've lost a lot of experience, in particular Jake and uh, Jaden Hines, they're probably the two big names, uh, Ryan Tyrrell over the off-season. But I, I was looking at North Launceston's uh, team, and even though they haven't lost all these players from the club, they've got about nine uh, missing from last year's grand final side. So, um, you know, likes of Simpson uh, and Pierce have gone, Young is still injured, Man Shandon's injured, uh, Mansell's gone, Hubbard and Ahern not playing, Ollington's gone into state, um, and so is Leaf Lang. So there's a few missing there for North Launceston as well, um, Nate. Yeah, absolutely, mate. I'm um, looking forward to the... Um, obviously, looking to see how the uh, the Devils boys... I'll obviously keep a close eye on those boys. But um, how the ones from the northwest coast um, transition into, into TSL football. Run us through a couple of those quickly. A couple that you're really looking forward to from the northwest coast. Yeah, so there's a couple not playing. Obviously, Geordie Payne not playing. And um, Ollie Cubank. Ollie DePoli Cubank. A little bit, little bit sore, so we've sort of pulled the strings on them. But we've got, um, we've got Harry Elmer. Uh, I'm not sure where, where North will use him, but uh, generally plays behind the ball... Um, we've also got Lenny Douglas. Lenny up Douglas forward. up forward, yeah. So you had him there for three. I yep. reckon I got him for five. Got him for today, five. Mate. I said three. Yeah, off, off air. Uh, those boys played what Devonport's uh, senior premiership side last year. Uh, only correct? Lenny. Lenny. Lenny did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I did see Harry Elmer play a couple of games last year at Devils level and didn't mind the way he used the footy, especially off the back line. Um, Launceston side. There's some. Uh, Nice little players in there as well. Lucas Wooten in particular from South Launceston. He's, he's made his way back to Windsor Park yeah, where junior, he played his junior footy. Yeah, absolutely. He's been a junior here. He was a junior here for a while. So he's um, he's come back and um, absolutely like he's bordering on a leap by foot. So hopefully yep. they can get the ball in his hands and we can see how he kicks it today. Yeah, and um, of course he was, uh, what was he, All-Australian under-16 last year. Okay. So there's some really good talent here. 
Um, big job for Sam Foley uh, down back. We we saw Sam play a lot of D-League footy over the years, and he struggled to get in the senior side. I thought he had a really good season last year, Sam Foley, uh, with a lot falling on him down back, and um, I, I'm interested to see how he can go again today. Looking forward to seeing the lots in the ruck one today. Jake Kilby recruited from St. Pat's. That's him. And Paddy Dwyer from Ireland. So uh, we'll see he's how up they and go. about with these Irish? Oh, I'll tell you what, it. he's up and about. He needs to be, though. He's as flat as a pancake <laughs> after last night's uh, basketball oh, result, yeah. Nathan. I didn't bring that up. I wasn't oh, going to bring that up. Oh, dear. He's up and about. It. He's up and about now, though. The start of the TSL season for 2024. It's going to be Kilby up against Alex Lee. Nothing better than starting uh, your TSL career up against the best. So it is Kilby and Lee. Lee gets it down in front. Interesting Oscar Van Dam starting on ball this season. Isaac Hyatt taken without it. The umpire saw it the same as I did. And Isaac Hyatt's going to have the first kickoff half back. So Hyatt, and he kicks it short. Here's Palfreman. He'll wheel and go on the outside. Taken high, was it? Yes, it's going to be play on advantage. No, it's not. It's going to come back. So uh, in the helmet there is Josiah Burling. Good to see him back at uh, Launceston playing down back at the moment. Went to Perth, was it, Nathan, last year? He was at Perth last year, mate. Oh, he hasn't kicked in the man on the mark, and that's Leary. He's pounced on it, but here does uh, Burling. He butters up and he gives it to Polferman. First inside 50 just for uh, Dave Gruber, but it's cut off well there in defence by Bennett. He gives it to Sulzberger. Liked his development last year. Taken from behind is Bennett. Great tackle. Really good tackle there for Launceston. Seth Pfeiffer. Seth Pfeiffer, the number 11. Made his debut last season. Gives it to Liam Jones. Another one inside 50 for David Gruber. That one's deep. Good leap there at the front of the pack for Launceston. Was Rocky Barron. What do you know about Rocky Barron? Uh, Nathan, it's going to be a free kick. It could go to Finn Gutwin. Or is it going to go to... Looks like it's Finn Gutwin. Bailey Kelp. Uh, Finn Gutwin Finn got Gutwin? the ball. Rocky, Rocky, Rocky. Barron, uh, Longford, played at Longford last year. Played a, bit of, played a couple of Devils games in our program last year as well. Got some um, serious wheels. He's got some serious wheels, mate. Yeah, tough, tough kid. Um, roofer by trade, so they, they breed them pretty tough. So yes. Finn Gutwin yes. from you about 30 out. Monty. He lays back. It's not great. There's Riley. Goes off his hands and out of bounds. A right forward pocket. So good start to Launceston. They got the couple of inside 50, some good tackling pressure. It's going to be a boundary throw in. Season 2024 will bring you all the action from around the other grounds. Kingborough playing North Hobart. Lauderdale and Clarence. That'll be a uh, belter down there, down south. Here's uh, Pfeiffer taking it out of the ruck. Getting it uh, into the hot spot was Alex Lee. Dangerous kick. Gutwin again. Taken in the tackle. A good tackle North Launceston there to Harry Elmer. Very short forward line macker for the Blues. Uh, Dylan Roy obviously the focal point there. Up it goes, Lee against Pfeiffer. Lee wins it easily. Hits it out towards space. Scooped out to Bennett. Low kick. Out here towards Douglas. Can't take the mark. Tackle laid there on Burling. It's on the far side. Eventually comes out. Little handball by Leary. Finds Van Dam. He handballs over the top. Chance here now for North Lonceston Stream through the centre. Bounce taken there by Michael Stingle back in the side. And another one, and left foot shot for goal, Michael Stingle. Welcome back to the TSL. First goal for the season, first goal for North Launceston, Michael Stingle. And a beautiful run there from the centre of the ground. He backed himself, he got to 40, and let fly to the southern end. And that's the first goal of the game, boys. Yeah, you can already see what I've noticed is North just wanting to put speed on the ball. They're just wanting to get catch catch the Launceston defenders out off guard, and you just see that, just handball chain through, and just, just the pace they've got. So that speed on ball is going to be... Yeah, I don't know what Launce- how Launceston will ca- uh, handle that, but let's, um, yeah, hopefully they can. He's come back, Michael Stingle from South Australia? South, yeah, from Norwood. Just injuries just let him down. We saw him here uh, take the TSL by storm in his first season, won the Matthew Richardson medal for best young player, had a bit of a crack over the sample, just body, just couldn't get up and going. But he, he's got serious wheels as well, Stingle. He forgot to welcome our stats man, David Gruber. I mentioned him twice, I know, at least I've mentioned I know. him. <laughs> he likes to uh, just be seen, not heard. <laughs> Here's uh, Sulzberger, a couple of touches early, releases the hands, gives over the top to Alex Lee. It's a forward spinning punt inside 50 over the back towards the city end. And uh, there for Launceston is Lenny Faulkner. Deep in defence, he did pretty well, got enough touch on it to Gillow. He'll be silky on the left. It was good enough. Finds Burling. Another, not a great kick again from Burling. The second one, he's uh, just Ooh. shanked a little bit. There's Harvey Griffiths. We saw him throw his body around in season 23, and he does it again in those blue boots. Heavy bump there on Presnell. And it's gone out of bounds. Lucky Presnell just sucking them in. 
Noah Jackson, the boundary umpire. He might be my boy from now on. Yep. I've nearly got uh, Dom Shaliro to the big time Foz. Talking to him this morning, our favourite. He's uh, doing some VFL and AFLW. We followed his career. Let's have a look at Noah Jackson now. Ball's bouncing around. Kicked out of thin air there was... Uh, Mid-air was Jones. Jones. It's coming now to Nicholas. So Mitchie Nicholas got the summer tan on young Mitchie. Number 38. A few issues with the North Lonnie jumpers, I've heard. They haven't quite arrived in the state yet, uh, Nathan. Haven't they? So a few numbers may be different today. Nicholas wheels and goes towards the city end. Hasn't quite got there. Harvey Griffiths keeps it in and kicks an easy goal. Well, the defensive effort there for Launceston was non-existent. He basically stopped near the point line and just took off towards the goalpost, and it was enough to kick a goal, Nate. He just stayed down, didn't he? And just, I think it fell in his hands. He didn't know he had it, and off he, off he went. Tatty to clear, aren't they, Nate? Uh, you know, just going to get along with that breeze and back their forwards in to kick those goals. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we've spoken about the size in the in the forward line, you know, a bit undersized, the Lonnie forward line, and, and their defenders, you know, generally... Uh, you know, they've got big uh, Dino sitting down there in the goal square, so there's not many taller than him out there. Um, yeah, so they're going to give him every every look at it, I suppose, by putting it up to him. Matching up with Tina McCormack back there is uh, young Oliver Dean. Looks like he'll play most of the day in the forward line, you think, Nathan? I think so, mate. Yeah, well, they've got uh, Agarnas as well. That yep. um, Obviously, he's a Launceston, lost Launceston product. Had a crack at Longford last year. From the centre bounce, Jake Kilby follows up his work. Gets tackled. Ball released. Avent kicks to half forward. Nearly trapped. And there, good effort by Declan Chug, who's moved forward, Macker. We talked about that uh, during the week, that move of Declan Chug up forward. Yeah, he's sort of started there, moved back. Now he's gone forward again. Umpire Geeson throws it up. Lee and Kilby. Kilby front position. Tackle laid on Avent. Now Jones has got it. Prepared to take the tackle. Got one slightly high. And he'll get a free kick off half back. He's in a few possessions already as Liam Jones. Played a lot forward last year, but needed this year. With the loss of some players in that midfield. Gets it to Conor McCormack. Looks inside. Goes a safer option down the line. Long kick. Blade Sulzberger front position. Knocked away by Stingle. Out in out towards Paul Freeman. Takes the tackler and Cox Goodja. Ball's released, taken nicely here by Bailey Kelp, the boy from Warrnambool. His kick's no good. And it's a mark in the back line by Theo Ives. Another positional change this year. Yeah, He's definitely going to play as a key defender. Back to Mitchell. Mitchell now, handball sideways to Bennett. Bennett long sweeping handball. They're going to move it here off half back through Douglas. Kicks to the wing. That's Douglas, I beg your pardon. He's got it now, Lenny Douglas. Takes the bounce, shows some toe. Kick short. Clears the contest. Chance for Dom Pitt over there. Leary, though, with a follow-up. Oh, and Griffiths, who's on him? He takes it. He drops the mark. Shrugs a tackle. That's good second effort there, though, uh, by the Lawson defender in Wooten. He clears the ball, but it's going to come straight back, is it? They can't pick it up. Tackle laid there on uh, Lenny Faulkner. He's legged. Going to get a free kick at half-back as Lenny Faulkner. It's one goal, uh, sorry, two goals straight, 12 North Launceston. And uh, the Blues yet to score. Been playing about uh, eight minutes in this first quarter. Really good one-on-one -on -one win there for Wooden, wasn't it? Um, I know Griffiths dropped the mark, but... Yeah, and it's not, it's, not, it's not generally strength, obviously, um, Lucas, but, um, yeah, did that well. That was Harry Elmer we first saw there. Yep, I coming out of half back there before, so his first kick of the game. So they go up to the uh, midfield and give it to Kilby, who gets a free kick. So now Kilby, big pack forms. Big it's Tony nice Garnis move. there. Going to be a mark or free kick to Max Roney. And Max Roney, another one in the uh, Devils lineup, part of the leadership team this year. Goes really short. It's got to be play on. Not a great kick. Uh, went about 10 metres and went to Stingle, who couldn't take it. Puts him under immense pressure. Up and under there for Launceston is Paddy Dwyer. First time we've seen him around the footy. Athletic uh, looking bloke. He's a good size, the Irishman. He's going to go up in the ruck here against Agarnas. They both come down. Here's Barron with those speedy wheels. Handball over the top. Oh, he's beset upon there. He's Hyatt. Great Hyatt. tackle. Bradley Cox. Good job. Hyatt. Hyatt. It? No, it wasn't high. It was high. It was no, it wasn't high. Hyatt. Hyatt. Foz, settle down. Agarnas. 
And Dwyer, in and under. There's a... It's not going to go anywhere again. The umpire circles. Trying to get the releasing handball. Here they go. Aganis does well. Gets it going north on his way. Picking the ball up there for Launceston was Bailey Kelp. There's going to be a free kick holding the Dom footy, the is it? Yep. Yep. Dom Pitt. Young Dom Pitt. He's got Bennett on sideways. He's got the matchup on Riley. Nicholas is all out here on his own. Barron just lets him go. Need to put a little bit tighter there, Rocky Barron. Comes over the top to Bales. Bales now goes through Sam Simpson. Back to Bales. Hit up. Ooh. Griffiths. Hits the ball hard again, Liam Jones. He's going to be caught near the boundary line. Well done, Tina McCormack on the up. Getting the ball out to Sam Foley. Only goes as far as Fletcher Bennett. Bennett. It's had a heap of it so far already. Switches a kick towards Cox. Good job. Doesn't quite take the mark. Off hands Van Dam. Kicks to the hot spot. Agarnas is there. Oh. Over the back. Griffiths again. He's kicked two. He kicked two in the first quarter, Harvey Griffiths. And he's in the right place at the right time. He read the contest well, gathered the ball in and uh, made no mistake. And that's three goals straight, 18 with the breeze, North Launceston. The Blues yet to score, Nathan Warrant. Yeah, Harvey just again stayed down and it just fell on his lap again, didn't he? Defenders all went up and um, no one stayed grounded. So um, there was better ball use by, you know, it looked like um, Launceston being a bit more patient through the back half, but... You know, I think I mentioned to you earlier, I'd like to see them with a bit of speed on the ball too because they're a young, youthful side and they've got the legs to do it. So, One of the most improved players in the TSL, Harvey Griffiths, Mackie. He was just a fringe player a couple of seasons ago. Well, we saw him put on all that weight yep. and strength and muscle and he came back looking a completely different man. I think the start of uh, last season, really strong. Oliver Dean in the ruck now. We'll talk about him in a moment, uh, Nathan. He's yep. had a big off-season. He, he gets up and down. Yeah, nice tap. Here's another one I want to talk about too, Van Dam. Moving into the midfield this year is a great move for him. It's a good tackle, Gillo. Jess Buller. Here's Buller. Here's uh, Fletcher Bennett, though, on five from Bennett oh, again. Another five marks mark. already, I reckon. Five marks. Fozzie Moore says. Goes inboard, looking for Bo Nash. Another one from the northwest coast. Gillo on the up. Here's Paul Freeman. Nicholas. He's going to go speed and go. Sulzberger, good by hand. Nash. Over the top again here now, North Launceston with Stingle. By hand, Nicholas says, sells a bit of candy to Wooden. He tries to get on the left, he can't. It comes back here now, North Launceston, Dom Pitt. Good goal from half back to half forward and Dom Pitt finishes it off. Great. North Launceston well and truly Great away foot. now. Yeah, just transitioned Great really foot. fast there, didn't they? They just go. Um, started here though, didn't it? Fletcher Bennett, just great positioning yep. again. It actually, I was watching the D-League, it's their game plan through their D-League too, so they're playing it across both systems, so... Um, As in what, just go? Like yeah, they pass. just want to go. Yeah, yeah, they just go fast. So they're yeah. giving their half-backs Which half is the AFL game now, isn't it? Giving their yes. half-backs a licence to go, yeah. which is great. Yeah, which is that AFL game. Yeah. Um, Ollie Dean, um, in the AFL Academy, great to see. Spent a bit of time at Collingwood in the off-season. He did. Yep, had a great time there. And, and again, um, obviously the tools take a little bit longer to come along, but he, he's going really well. Ruck, rucked OK against some big quality opposition on yeah. the weekend. Um, but he, but his hand, like his, his ruck craft is, is fantastic. So... Um, yeah, we're in for a big season, Ollie. The big size 18 boots on him. Back in the middle, Nathan Geeson. It's clearing the area. So Jake Kilby back in the ruck. It goes with Dean. Dean wins that one. In fact, he takes his own possession. Handball's four to the contest. Runners required. Buller's there. Almost taken by Van Dam. Pitt with a handball now to Sulzberger. They're on fire, North Fonterston. Agatis! Can't take it on the chest. Good pressure from behind there from Tina McCormack. Probably should have taken that one. Inside 50s for Dave Gruber, yes. please, Puzzle. Uh, at the moment, it's 7-3. to three, Yeah. And the seven entries, and what, we had four goals. So they've been pretty uh, good up forward in converting their opportunities of North Launceston. So we've got a boundary throw in, about 30 metres around from their goal. And that dead pocket here at Windsor Park, where it can stay for a long time on wet, windy days. Agarnas gets the tap. Be a secondary ball up here as players pile in. Tries to come out. Ball says North Launceston players, but we're going to have another ball up. In fact, it might be a free kick. How a big Tony Garner end up in the red and black, Nate? Um, I'm not sure, mate. They Maybe they just picked up the phone, mate, and gave him... Gave him I think call. he's pretty tight with Blade Sulzberger and those boys. So, um, yeah. you know, he probably, he probably... I think he only played one or two senior games at Longford last year, and he's around the ground. He's one of the best ruckmen, you know, we've had in our programs. Yeah, definitely. Lenny Faulkner long out of defence. Jess Buller couldn't quite take the grab. And Oscar Van Dam midfield. Nath, I know you've liked Van Dam the last couple of years in the program. Yeah, so we generally use him off, and he's generally been a half-backer, yep. but I, li- I really like this, you know, and um, by reports, he, I watched him actually play for Casey there the other w- couple of weeks ago. He, 
he lined up for Casey against Melbourne. Jake um, Kilby, short throw in. He's going to go out of bounds once again. So, again, just something different, isn't it? Just hard, like, living in Melbourne, I heard. It was just, you know, struggling to, you know, yeah. cost of living and those sort of things. It was really the only reason he came back. I think so, yeah. He, um, obviously, Connor Leaflang went across there as well. I think he's, he's with Casey at the yeah, moment. Okay. So, there's another one north that's, that's headed over there. Bounty throw in. If you just join us, it's North Lonson. Four goals straight. Lonson yet to score, but the Northern Bombers do have a breeze. Player held without it was Liam Jones. He's been one of the better players for the Blues in this first quarter. He switches play. Now, it might be 50 here. Or is it... Uh, no, he has to come back over the mark. Unfortunate, because the releasing kick was a pretty good one. Team of the year last year, Liam Jones, wasn't he? Yes. No, team of the year last year. So obviously set for a big That's year. That's all set! Short kick to Paul Freeman. Still at half back for the Blues. Been playing 15 minutes the first quarter. We'll get some round the grounds in a minute for you, Macca. If you can keep an eye on it as it comes over to Burling. Burling to half forward. It's a lovely kick. Hits Finn Gutwin on the chest. Chance for another inside 50 for the Blues. He kicks to the pocket. That tight North Austin defence once again. This time it's Bailey Mitchell. The Gutwin's come across from Bracknell this year. Played senior footy at Bracknell last year. North junior he was. Lockie Mitchell, it was a bigger pardon. Bailey uh, not on the senior side today as it comes in. Now, Buller, confidence, the 16-year-old, shrugs a couple of tackles, hooks it inside 50, but there's no one there. And Harry Bales. 15, Foz. 15, is he? Only 15, 15. years old. 16 this Goodness. year, but yeah. There you go. The handball comes over now to Harry Bales. Now towards Elmar. Handball's four to Griffiths. Not a great handball to Bales. Could be a turnover. Taken by Polferman. Spins out of the contest. There's Paddy Dwyer over the top here towards Kilby. Kicks it off the ground. Jones, 50 out. Kicks the only chance there for the Blues is Ben Hyatt. He's up against two. He might win. He's pushed in the back, is he? No. no. Force through for the first score for Launceston. and one behind. And they trail North Launceston four goals straight, 24. As the ball comes out now to Michael Stingle. Yeah, around the grounds, Lauderdale lead Clarence by a point, and Kingborough are eight points up on North Hobart. And here at uh, Windsor Park, it's four goals to North Launceston. One behind. The one behind. That one behind we just had there to the Launceston Football Club. So they didn't get the ball far, just got outside 50, did North Lonnie, and now it's going to be a boundary throw in. Kilby and Lee, good size, big Kilby. Nice, nice tap. tap down to Palfreman. He's beset upon by Sulzberger. Gets it over to Gillo. Left foot. Got to hit a target and does. Finds Isaac Hyatt. Well done. These boys like the pink boots this year, Nath. Yeah, Jonesy was talking them up last no, night. No, look at Isaac Hyatt as well. And like those two are peas Pol- in a pod. Palfreman. Look at yeah. Palfreman's even polished his up. The pink boots. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what Dave Gruber thinks of them. He's an old traditional He would have been black, wouldn't he, Dave? Dave Gruber down Frankston. In the they didn't have, believe in pink oh. at Frankston back in the day. The old stone, the stone cats down there. <laughs> don't think they had boots, did they? Isaac, oh, it's goodness gracious. Isaac Hyatt, 40 metres out, directly in front. Leans back. He hasn't made the distance with that little breeze that's flickering there. And it goes through on the right side for one behind. Pink boots. Pink boots. You wouldn't see Riley Sanders in them. Oh, no. He's in the black. Nah. Might get to some of those lads later on as we uh, get through the call. Going really well in the AFL so far. Awesome to see. Here's Stingle. Down the line, it's a grass burner. Here's Leary. One, two, bites. Here it goes now. Looking for Chug on the outside. Another fumble. Here's Harvey Griffiths. He's already kicked two. Pfeiffer does well. Holding the ball up. Buller. So he's a 15-year-old Buller. Yeah, 15-year-old. Um, he reasonably new to footy, mate. Like, I think this is probably only his... It, at a school down here, Riverside or something like that? Um, I think he goes to LC now. Yeah, okay. So, um, yep. But um, it's probably only about his 20th game of football. Yeah, so wow. He's a soccer player okay. um, and just a great kid like... Um, Stingle yeah. finds Van Dam. They go by hand again, that forward handball. Here's Chug. Just can't get on the end of it at the moment. Nice pick up by Griffiths. Chug now inside 50. Big Tony Garnas. One tight bite to the cherry. He gets them down there with his good mate Sam Foley in the opposition. That'll be a good contest. Here's Leary. He oh. snaps to Leary. Misses near side. Good problem to have those tools. Just hang on. Full. Hang on. I think it's going to be a free kick. I think it's going to come back to Leary. He's going to get a second go here. It is. 
Yeah, it's good those tools resting forwards that we're going to say. Yeah, absolutely. Like they had Ollie Dean down there, and obviously Alex Lee when he's on the then Tony will go down there. So yeah, tough to tough to combat, isn't it? It's one thing we called for last year in the grand final at North Hobart. We just felt that they missed a trick not playing Ollie Dean in that grand final. They had enough inside fifties. They weren't far away in that grand final, to be totally honest, and they just kept kicking to smalls. Because generally, with they don't mark, it's coming to ground, especially at North Hobart, where the ball gets in a bit. So Leary going to get a second go. Speaking of team of the year. He's a live wire, is Leary. That little bounce as he kicks it, and he misses the same result. Near side miss. So another behind there. Looks like Alan O'Sign with the running duties for North Launceston too in the pink. Big Alan there. O'Sign, it probably yeah. is. Saw him running the other day. He's fit. Yeah. Alan O'Sign. One of their greats. Fullback, Josiah Burling with the ball. Weighing up his options. Nice tricky kicking in against the breeze. And he goes... So centre half back here and a long kick. Punched out by Lee. Taken by Stingler who's been busy in the first quarter. Kick the first goal. He's tackled. Does release it. Somehow it comes out now to Sulzberger to Lee. Not a great handball. Intercepted here by Wooten. Leans back on a nicely weighted kick to Isaac Hyatt. Press with Wooten early. Had some yeah. good involvements. Hyatt now. Dangerous kick. Kilby has to make a contest from the spillage Van Dam. Kick to a dangerous spot at 30 out. Leary bursts through, can't pick it up. Does get it now to Sulzberger. Has to backtrack. Little kick to Griffiths. Oh, he hooks for goal. Is this three in the first quarter? Harvey Griffiths. What a snap that is. What a first quarter he's having here at Windsor Park. That's three goals to Harvey Griffiths. Well, it couldn't be a 15-metre kick. The umpire was going to pay it, which I thought was generous. Harvey Griffiths knew it wasn't 15. He just snapped it over the shoulder and three for him. Today's broadcast brought to you by Elgas for all your LPG needs statewide. Talk to the locals with knowledge. Phone 13 11 61. What a great quarter by Harvey Griffiths, Nathan Warren. Mate, he's just popped up, hasn't he? He's yeah, made it his own. So three three early ones in. How long are we gone? We're halfway through the quarter thereabouts. Yeah, it's 21 minutes. Yep. So, um, nah, great start. Should make note, a late inclusion today was uh, on debut. It was Isaac Smedley, yes. boy from Prospect and St. Patrick's College. He's got the job on Leary. He's a... He's a nice developing size uh, defender, isn't he? He is, Isaac mate. Yeah, he's, he's sort of that in-between size, but he, I really like his, his, his ability to intercept. He's probably one of his strengths. So, he kicks the um, ball pretty well. Yeah, I don't think, I think he'll pay pretty close attention to Brandon, though. Today. Yeah, he will. He will. So they get the uh, centre clearance here at Launceston, but only goes as far as Nicholas, who finds Bales. Look at them running waves. Van Dam on the outside. Gets it in here now. Give me a name, Fuzzle. Is it uh, Bo Nash? No, it's Lenny Douglas. Lenny, Lenny Douglas, Douglas misses near side. And it was one of the newbies. Lenny Douglas it was. He was fast. He had a good look at them. And Burling's going to take the kick out. Long kick. He's looking for Rocky Barron. Can't quite take the mark. He's up against a couple now. Elmer couldn't take with him. Good second effort, Rocky Barron. And balls defensively, but it's called a throw. Oh, gee, you see those quite often during the game. But anyway, Elmer short. Cox, in fact, it's uh, Sulzberger. Speaking of Cox, good. He's been quite uh, quiet he's, in this first quarter so far. Well, he's lined up on the wing on today, the wing, Foz. Yeah. yeah, which is something a bit different, isn't it? Blade Sulzberger, has he got it in him, Macca? From about 55. Yep. I think he's set for a big year, Blade Sulzberger. I think this will be a, be a big year for him. Like, he's getting to his um, peak as a football. He's had that experience now. Played some great games last season. Yeah. 50 out, 45 degree angle, sets it out left. You had the distance, but... Well, that's uh, what I meant. That's what I meant. <laughs> yes, not that's the accuracy. Uh, round the grounds, Foz. Lauderdale 16, leave Clarence 8. 20 and a half minutes gone in the first. And Kingborough 16, leave North, lead at North Hobart 9. A couple of uh, games there. We'll keep an eye on throughout the day. It's Josiah Burling in the back pocket. Funny old kick. Will land in the lap of Stingle, who can't quite mark it. Release the handball to Cox. Good job. 45 out. Just to the left. They're peppering the goals now, the Bombers. 5-3-33. Leading at the Blues. Two behinds, two points. Burling goes quickly and finds Jones on the bounce. Has to collect it. This way, that away. Kicks to the back flank. Hyatt's there. The bounce eludes him. Roney with the punch from behind. Now with Elmer. Gets the handball to Cox Goodger. Rinse and repeat. Angle tougher this time. Let's fly from 50. Brad Cox Goodger. Same result. And one behind. Hits the post on this occasion. Nothing else but having a shot on goal inside 50, Bradley. <laughs> He's only got one <laughs> thing on his mind, and rightly so. Absolutely. How many times have we seen him kick those? Yeah. So he's given us a fair highlights package. Yeah. So Burling, he strolls out of the square, goes short, finds Palfreman. Palfreman. 
He really is the senior player in the team now in the middle there. Of course, Riley up forward. They're older premiership players. Foley by hand. Goes to feet. Pulferman butters up. Only goes as far again as Bennett. Another intercept mark. Bennett, now they go. Stingle. He's going to turn on to that left. He's got Cox Goodger on. He hadn't touched it till Fozzie gave him a little rip for not touching it. <laughs> He's had three touches in the last 30 seconds. And this is going to be a Bradley Cox Goodger cannon. Quickly, uh, Nathan, tell us about his role now with AFL Taz. Uh, yeah, so he's he's come on full time as um, the uh, so the academy academy head of the academy. All right, let's see what year, he can so. do. Do as I say, and hopefully do as I do here. Bradley Cox Goodger. He runs around on the left. It starts come to back. come back. It's going to be a beauty. That's how you kick them, boys. <laughs> you can put that one on the tape for the lads from outside fifty. Bradley Cox Goodger kicks another, and that is their sixth for the quarter. Yeah, so he's putting together a curriculum at the moment that we'll implement, that he'll um, work through with coaches. We're obviously advertising for coaches to come into those junior programs now, so um, they close on Wednesday. But Brad's hit the ground running and um, been great, going to be a great asset for, a, for um, obviously, the Devils program moving forward. Excellent. Chris Sayer, boundary rider, equates the shot from the boundary by Brad Cox Goodger, the one by Jack Higgins. Except uh, I think Brad's was inside the field of play. Oh, Chris, oh. is, Chris is a St Kilda yeah, star. Yeah. He's very Oh, you are you? Oh, goodness. Yeah, We're surrounded go. by him, Foz. There We're we up go. and about. They are okay. indeed. They've got the Bombers this round. Yeah, I'm a bit worried about it yeah. against the Bombers with a few injuries. Yes. Suspension. I was hoping Ari was going to get a, get a look yeah, in there. Yeah, well, he's he didn't. had a good team. Up it goes. Game Lee with a secondary week. tap. Gets it to Isaac Hyatt, who kicks it half distance. Nicholas in front. Ruck, uh, rove there by Paul Freeman. Off to Pfeiffer. Back to Paul Freeman from 40. Let's fly. He'll get Great another kick as it's offline. He was tackled late. I'll tell you what, I look out there and I see number 11, big bodied uh, Lonnie player. Joby Harper's old number, number 11, hey, big got Seth. A bit of, yeah, he's he? a bit of Joby. Look at him, he? got yeah. the size of him, yeah. young Seth. Welcome, Joby, for listening. Oh, he's already sent a little message. Has he? he said, okay. Go Blues, go Blues, he said, the big Joe. Welcome to all our listeners, probably in uh, different spots around Tasmania. Maybe fishing, maybe at the beach. Listening to some footy here on a good Friday afternoon. Is it's Brody Palfreyman? Ali Croswell's in church. It's his birthday, isn't it? He's in it's the birthday b- tomorrow. Tomorrow. He's in the bush, yes. he told me. As he comes over now, does Brody Palfreyman, and he's set out that. to the right. It's another opportunity. About a few in this term inside 50 for Dave Gruber, 12 to seven. So not outrageously different, but a six goal lead at the moment to the Bombers. They do have the breeze as Theo Ives kicks it outside defensive 50. Little handball there from Kelp. Inside 50 now, the Blues. Chance, Ben Hyatt, dangerous. Back to Palfreyman, second opportunity. Oh. Straight into the lap of Fletcher Bennett, who takes the mark in the defensive goal square. Well, you said he had four or so before. He's taken at least three yeah. since yeah. then, so that would be seven. He finds Van Dam on the outlet. It's not that they haven't been without chances, uh, Launceston, with that, uh, against that breeze. Lee finds Cox Goodger. He runs away from Pfeiffer. Inside 50, Oliver Dean sets. Can't quite get his hands to it. Good follow-up, though. Left-hand handball. On the outside, Leary. It's going to come back. Kick is going to be a goal advantage. It's going to have to be. Leary kicks it. It was a good contest from Oliver Dean. Nice handball. And it was going to be a free kick. I think it was going to go to Dom Pitt. Yeah, I think Avery Avery Thomas just sort of held on to him a little bit long and fell on his back Mm. there. Well, they've had chances, Launceston. Haven't they inside 50 screws for Lonnie? They're 13 now to 8. Yeah, so, but they've, yeah. Had, yeah, they've had 8. Absolutely. Like Hyatt's missed, Palfreyman's missed. Um, they missed a couple of chances there. Gutwin. Gutwin missed. Yeah, so they haven't been without them. Seven goals, four from 13 entries, Nathan. I was about, so, yeah. <laughs> about yeah. to say the yeah. other way. Yeah, that, that's, you've got to put them through the big sticks, don't you? That's the name of the game. In the middle again, umpire Nathan Geeson. We've been playing now 28 minutes. Might be a couple more minutes left with the, a number of goals kicked in this first quarter. Been some really good footy played. Lee, the tap. But uh, might be taken away here by Jones. Off to the ground, though, by Stingle. Meeting it is Foley. Good tackle, Stingle. And it'll be a ball up. Taking side of the centre square for the Bombers. And we can see uh, what Michael Stingle's going to do for this midfield already. And his performance in this first quarter. Kilby nullifies the tap. Cox Goodger tries to burst through. Picking up as Connell McCormack. He's tackled to a standstill. 
Stingle's been throwing the tin around too in the gym. He's got a fair set of pipes on him yeah, now. He's, I, he's I bulked can, out a bit. Absolutely, since uh, two seasons ago. You can see that for sure. Cox Goodyear takes the tap from Lee. Shark day by Jones. Releasing handball to Conor McCormack. He's under pressure immediately from Nicholas. Nicholas does well now. He gets it to Van Dam. To Pitt. He has a runner here in Chug. Chug gets to 55. Centering kick to Dean, who takes the mark. Good footy, North Launceston. And positive lead there for young Oliver Dean. And uh, you love to see young players take that first grab mark, Nathan Warren. Yeah, and if there's a glitch in, in Ollie's game, this is it, where he can go forward and, and dominate like we, we need. So, so this is a great start. He did it a couple of times last year for North. I know a game against Kingborough there where he, he came out and took some big, big crucial grabs. So this is the area of his game that we probably need to work with him a bit. He's going to have to set this out to the right. The prevailing breeze coming from the north. Doesn't. He goes straight to the left-hand goal post. It fades away. And that's quarter time here at Windsor Park. And at 7-5-47 North Launceston. Leading Launceston two behind, sorry, three behinds, three points. So that's a 44-point lead at quarter time. We, of course, preface this by saying there was a breeze favouring the southern end. But whether it was a seven-goal breeze or not, Macca, uh, I wouldn't be sure of that. Only three or four at least. I'm going to give them, yeah, I'm going to give Launceston a couple, a couple definitely because of the breeze. And as I said, they should have kicked three at this end yep. um, from from some pretty simple set shots. So it's uh, it's North Launceston all the way, and their goal kickers have been Harvey Griffiths. He's kicked three, and then singles to Cox Goodyear, Leary, Stingle, and Pitt, and no goal kickers at this stage for the Launceston Blues. Nathan Warry for Warren for uh, City Park Radio. How have you seen the first quarter? Where have North got on top? Ah, oh, just the speed, just the ball in motion, mate. They don't go slow at any at any any point fives. They just want to go, and that's that's just catching catching the defenders off guard, the Launceston defenders, and the mids are probably just trailing a little bit. So some of the better players, I thought uh, Bennett was fantastic down back. We've spoken about his mark. And I think Mitchell's doing a really good job on Riley. Like we haven't even called Riley's name at all, all so far, and. Um, and obviously Harvey Griffiths with his couple of goals. And I think Kilby's battling away against three yep. legitimate ruckmen. Um, and then the, the two, the partners in crime in Hijack and Jones, and then Pelf is, you know, showing some, some leadership actually in, in the middle there for him. Yeah, just to back your point up there, the, the hit-outs usually Marcus Lee is... Marcus Lee. <laughs> Alex, Alex Basketball, Alex my brain. Oh, <laughs> oh, listen yeah, listen yeah, yeah. oh dear. Listen Alex Lee is dominating that stat, but it's uh, only 12-7 to 7, uh, at quarter time. So Jake Kilby doing pretty well there. The clearances, 13-7. to 7, So the Bombers definitely on top in the, the middle and around the ground. Inside 50s, 14-8. to 8, The Bombers way. Marks inside 50, 3 to North Launceston, 1 to Launceston. Free kicks. The Blues have had 11 to North Launceston, 3. And 10 intercept marks to North yeah, Launceston to zero. Yeah. So uh, that tells a story as well. We'll take a short break here on City Park Radio for 90 seconds or so. Hear from some of our sponsors. When we come back, we'll set the scene for the second quarter with North Launceston leading by 44 points. Play your cards right with new LPG deals from Elgas. Whether you're moving in or you're settled in, make the switch online today. From LPG account credits, fixed pricing and carbon offset options, Elgas has got you covered. Don't lose out. Visit the website, choose your new deal and sign up today. Go online, www.elgas.com.au. Elgas, local, safe and reliable. A sponsor of City Park Radio. What you hear on community radio is governed by the community broadcasting codes of practice. The codes of practice cover matters relating to program content that are of concern to the community, including local content, news, current affairs, Australian music content, programs for children, and the responsibilities associated with broadcasting to the community. They also cover aspects such as community access and participation in the operation of this service. Copies of the codes are available from the Community Broadcasting Association website, www.cbaa.org.au. Mr Lotto here. If you need Lotto, we're open. If you need post, we're open. If you need magazines, we're open. In fact, we're open for everything, pretty much all of bleeding time. And weekends. Good, in it? <laughs> so, what are you waiting for? Come on in. Invermain News Agency. Serving you when you need us most. Tiri Pie. A sponsor of City Park Radio. This sports broadcast is brought to you by Elgas. For all your LPG needs, talk to the locals with knowledge. Elgas, call 13 11 61. A sponsor of City Park Radio. 
quarter time, Windsor Park. It's North Lots and 7 5 47, leading the Blues three behind three points. Just a few metres from us, uh, Darren Lovell and Damien Donnelly, the Lonnie Stats boys, do a great job, and they always give us a printout, Macker, of the, the Blues stats at yes. quarter, uh, what, the quarter breaks. And uh, what are you seeing there at the sheet at quarter time? Well, basically, Palfreman's had the most footy for them, 13. Six kicks, seven handballs, and also seven contested possessions. Liam Jones with seven. Burling's had seven, but most of those have been the kickouts. Isaac Hyatt, five. Bailey Gillow, four. So they haven't not, had a lot of the footy when you look nah, down there. Not a lot of the footy have they, really. Um, they're keeping Stingle stats. They always try and keep one player that they think is dangerous, and Stingle's had seven, 34 handball receives. Lots of uh, lots of those handball receives, hasn't it been for North Launceston? Um, no. Yeah, it's just I've noticed that that's probably one thing they've changed in their game. They're just putting speed on the ball and just keeping the ball in motion. It's not allowing it's not allowing Launceston to set up in any way, shape, or form. So and they've got the skills to do that. Absolutely, as well. Dave. Yeah. So yeah. when you say speed on the ball, just for our listeners, like we've seen like the Hawthorne model back in the day and whatever, just keeping the ball off. Yeah, it's probably it's slow play. So now it's just go. now it's just go. They just it's just front on. So all Launceston can do is come out in front on. Yep, and they're at speed, so they're, they're either going to burst through the through the tackle or what. But they just they just won't go slow, pull back off the mark, heads out the other side and away. They're just going to ball in motion. And we see the, the handballs go forward, right. everything goes yep. forward. So yep. we're moving away from that that the style of play that we used to criticise a few years about that chip around, yeah, chip yeah. around, chip around, yep. sort of stuff. Yep. And it doesn't allow your defence to set up then. Yes, when you chip it around, your defenders can get back. You can you can yep. generate a plus one beyond the ball. This this doesn't allow because everyone's just heading back to goal. Yep. And even if you don't win the ball at the source, as long as you've got someone like a Fletcher Bennett behind the footy set up right, yep. then you go. Absolutely. As long as you get it back off half back, 100%. that's fine. Yep. Yep. Just right. set up well behind the footy, set up well, and then just go. I can see, uh, I think it might be Chris Sayer down there, who's just emerged from the Launceston huddle. Chris, what do you got for us? Yeah, Coach Mitch Thorpe spoke to his troops very complimentary of the opposition. He said, that's what it feels like to be punched in the throat. <laughs> so they're very complimentary of the opposition. This is going to be a tough game for them, but this is a, big, a new quarter. There's some changes in the back line. Keep an eye out for. Uh, interesting uh, to see. In the, um, uh, looking on too is Peter Gutwin and uh, Adrian Dean. So some father sons there, uh, and also Jay Blackbury's ha- having a good look on too. He's uh, Tony. Hi. Yeah, just over in the other camp. Uh, Adrian was really pleased with the way that they uh, they went forward. He just wants them to go a little bit quicker. He feels a few times they just get in the ball, looking, thinking about it, and then going. And he just wants them to follow their instincts and go really quickly. Uh, he feels a little bit behind on the stoppages and the clearances, so he wants them to lift up on that. And just tighten up a little bit when running back for defence. Uh, mainly aimed at the midfield there for not coming back quite enough and not c- picking up their man. But overall, very well pleased with it. And just wants them to follow their uh, instinct the way they've been trained to. Tony, no injuries you can see down there for either team? No, not at this point. Thank you, Tony. Webb and Chris Sayer down on the boundary. Today's broadcast brought to you by Elgas for your LPG needs statewide. Talk to the locals with knowledge. Phone 13 11 61. Thank you for your support once again for local sport in northern Tasmania. Don't forget, we've got the Tornadoes broadcast starting next Saturday night against the Hobart Chargers, live from Elfin from 5.55. And we'll also be back here again next Saturday for Launceston versus Kingbra, the reigning premiers. Uh, from 5 to 2. So plenty of sport coming up in uh, the next couple of weeks and also right throughout the winter here on City Park Radio. As Matthew's arrived back with some uh, refreshments. A bit dry, Foz. Well, I'm not, not used to this. Refreshments, yeah, of course. I'm, yeah, I'm not used to this calling. <laughs> so let's see if the uh, win can have any uh, benefit for Lonces in this quarter. That's a nice start. It was Kilby down to Pulferman. Inside 50. Here come North Launceston. And that's uh, once again through Bennett to Bales. Out the back now to Avent, the evergreen Avent. Terrific player over the decade he's been. Multiple premierships. They come in board now. Pitt. He went for Salisbury. He went over his head and fell in the hands of Lee. Lee turns. Jones is going to have to go here. He has a bit of a look at Bennett. Bennett brings it down now. He sweats on him, does Jones. There's Riley. Literally sat on him. He's going to hold it up. So you mentioned Dylan Riley. He's a, he's a veteran, but... Uh, he needs to either uh, get up the ground and get involved or get very dangerous inside 50. He's trying to drag Bennett back, but Bennett's not going to have too much of it, I don't think. Kilby going pretty well in the ruck. Here's Jones. Scrubby kick again. Here's Riley. Let's see what he can do. Ball doesn't bounce favourably. Falls in the arms of Bennett again. Elmer over the top through Bales. And here's Cox Goodger. He's changed his direction. Goes on to the left. He's got good vision. He's got good eyes. And coming down the front here now, Douglas. out in front is Lenny Douglas. The boy from Devonport. Looks for uh, 
and can't find his Northwest teammate in Bo Nash. Wooten turns left foot. Alex Lee looks into the sun but takes the mark on his chest. Yes, Nathan, what are we looking? I oh, know, just looking. They were lined up in the middle there. I thought he was going to pull the trigger on it. Harry Bales was in a great position. And Long kick inside 50. Griffiths! Up he goes. Nearly comes down with it on the way down. Tin and McCormack. But uh, Griffiths is dangerous. He kicked three. A couple of real opportunistic goals. They're trying to sit up behind the footy here. Go Jones, there. McCormack. Going to get some instruction here from the coach. Here's Leary at the stoppage. Leary misses. Gee whiz. We talk about Brandon Leary. That was him in a nutshell right there. Bursting through. Quick snap. Would have been goal of the day nominee. Just a live wire, isn't he? He's <laughs> Here's Lucas Wooten. Let's see what his kicking skills are like. Going to take the kick out. So he's this got Jones out wide. He's going to go shorter. Find Lenny Faulkner. Faulkner. He's just tucked away in that back pocket now, though. He might have to go back to Wooden in the square. He decides not to. He decides to go down the line. Big Tony Garner sets. Coming through. Jackie Avent, good hands. Here's North Launceston now through. Harry Elmer has a good look. Misses again. That's just the difference of the slow play there. That North Launceston yeah. forced them into a slow play, and it, it gave them numbers behind the ball. I would have so. liked to have seen him go back there. He just came down the line and set right into the hands of North Launceston. Wooten comes out now to Jones. On the mark is Nash. Jones. It's going to be a good kick. Oh, it's over the top of uh, Tin and McCormack. Didn't judge it very well. Bales. Avent's got to be a good tackle. It's not. Tie. Avery Thomas gives it away, and Avent's going to have a shot at goal. He gives it to Oh, he's going <laughs> to give it to Cox Goodger, but Sulzberger was in the way. He wanted to give it to Bradley. A Jack Avent. Another yep. team of the year last year, Foz, wasn't he? Yep. Jackie Avent played, well, you can put him anywhere, really. Back pocket, forward pocket, small defender, on baller, outside, inside. He's been a terrific player for North Launceston over the years. Here he is. Avent leans back. It looks pretty good. It is good. It's a goal. And he starts the uh, goal scoring for North Launceston in the second quarter. They now go on, Foz. Eight goals lots. Five, eight goals, 7.55. Seven, eight goals, 7.55 to 0.33. Three. Yeah, just a bit untidy there from Avery coming in for that tackle there and just, just caught him too high and fell on top of him. So, Well, it was a good kick from Jones, but he, yeah. Tina McCormack just seemed to lose it he somehow, put one arm didn't up he? And, yeah. Just put one arm up. So uh, at least they're taking the game on still, trying yep. to get back into the centre corridor. Yeah, and they have to. Like, what they're... Not much more they can really do, is it? Around the grounds, Lauderdale 24, lead Clarence 10, and Kingborough 30, lead North Hobart 15 now, the reigning Premier. Back in the middle of Windsor Park, beautiful day here, mid-20s. Love like this time of year when the footy starts. And uh, goes right through now to the end of September. And North Launceston on this display are going to be right in contention, you'd think, you'd think in uh, season 2024. He comes high, it's tackled from behind, doesn't release it. Good tackle there by Sulzberger. Yeah, well, I think they've still got, say, Man Shandon, they've got Young, um, they've got Dipoli Kubank, they've got Geordie yep. Payne. How many games do you reckon the Devils boys could play throughout the season for North Launceston? All going um, well. It probably just depends on how it stacks up with buys for clubs yeah. and that. We've got a couple of buys. Obviously, they're back. We got we play next week, and then there's another buy. So, yep. so hopefully, we see Geordie and, and QBank uh, come into the North Launceston lineup in that way and, and get a look at them. Nathan Geeson, umpire throws it up. Kilby's been a pretty good job. Shares that tap there with Lee. Stingle tackled, releases nicely to Sulzberger. Here they go. Half for Leary marks on his chest. And uh, Lenny Fortin is going to learn all about <laughs> defensive work today, playing on Brandon Leary. A big task for the young man. Leary is up and about. He's kicked one already in the first quarter. And he's right in front, 40 out. One of those no-excuse shots. Salisbury are dominant around those clearances yeah, at the moment. Just, just that big body, mate. He just, you know, he's got the size just to, to get through and, and use it, spit the ball out to him. Leary shuffles in, kicks for goal. He's offline, though. Off to the left. So it's 8 8 56, plays three behinds. Dave Gruber inside 50s, 4 to 1, or 5 to 1 already this quarter. The Bombers way. Short kick. Comes out from Burling to Foley. Invited now to play on. Back to Burling, back to Foley. The handball from Burling wasn't great. Pressure from Griffiths, sees the ball out of bounds. In front of uh, the can bar over there, which is 
Well patronised today. Nice crowd. People with shorts and T-shirts enjoying the uh, autumn sunshine. Yeah, there's a couple Great of crowd. ukes packed up with uh, a few of the boys over there in the far side. The brew coffee out doing good business. Oh, hello. Here we go. It's it's under new, take long. It's under new management, unfortunately. Is it? Oh, what do you mean, unfortunately? <laughs> oh, well, they don't me, know who you are? A work in progress. <laughs> <laughs> no freebies today. You have to pay. You have to work dip in into progress. your own pocket. Work in progress. Did you have to dip in? Didn't go over there. Oh, he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's filthed up. Have a listen to him. Brew coffee, hut. If you can listen, we're looking for a sponsor for Dave Moore's cup of tea. <laughs> I'll be over there next week as uh, Kilby now begins to tap out. He's gone part-time at work this year too, Dave Moore, so he's not got as much coming into the bank account. And it comes. Chance for Launceston. <laughs> Kick forward here to half forward, but uh, waiting back there was Ives. He couldn't take the mark. Chance here. Ben Hyatt, little handball out here towards Kelp. He's outnumbered. They've always got the outnumber, that North Austin defence. Yep. Bennett, back now to Mitchell. Long kick, here to half back. Not handling the ball well there. Gets the handball forward. Event back to Sulzberger. Sam Simpson was there before. Tackle laid there on Nash. Chance for Sulzberger. Comes out, it's scrambly play now. And it's going to be a ball up in the centre of Windsor Park with uh, North Thompson 8 8 56 leading the Blues three behind three points. Some tired players out there already. First game of the season. Ball up in the middle of the oval. It's all North Launceston. Launceston still looking for their first goal. Holferman might help them with that, but he's beset upon by Van Dam. Just gets it over the top to Launceston player in Finn Gutwin. But it's all North Launceston. Max Roney, left foot, streaming out of defence. Nice kick to Chug, couldn't find him as he was uh, well sport. Roney butters up, gives it to Griffiths, steps inside. Underground handball now to Van Dam. They're on a roll here, North Launceston. Chug arches the back. He tries to get it over the top. He can't do so. But it comes out now to North Launceston. Shot at goal, misses. Is that Bo Nash? Uh, side, Bo Nash. It was Bo Nash, yep. Bo Nash just misses. There's lots of misses up this end of the ground. The Christian school end. Well, in the ball in his hand now is Josiah Burling. Can he clear half back? He goes with a long kick this time. The target is Riley up against Roney. Riley thumps it away from the contest. Out of bounds right in front of us. A little bit of push and shove. Did well, Max, there. One yes. on one with Riley. Yeah, playing basically as a, as, a, as a full back. Yeah. If Riley's the full forward, so it'll be good for young Maxwell. Good size, good height on him. So boundary throw in right here in front of us. Spectators in the sun. I wish we were, Foz. There's not much sun on the deck. Give it an hour or so. Okay, excellent. Rocky Barron gets it from the tap out. It's going to be a ball up. He's a big figure, Kilby, isn't he? Like isn't he? he? Yeah, he's good him. size. Yeah, ripper size. Kilby. Nice tap down. Cox good. Your sharks it, though. He larch the back onto the left. Inside 50. Oh, oh it's a good mark. Smedley. Here's Smedley. Yep. You mentioned his intercept capabilities. That's a good start. And That'll he's just got to the nerves. He has to back himself like that. He has to go after those and back himself. Here he goes, Isaac Smedley. Oh, Riley! Takes a mark. Good first uh, touch of the day to Dylan Riley. He's going to go into the middle. He's going to try and look for Wooten. Doesn't go. And he kicks it straight to Van Dam. It's the second time they've been cut off there. Now it gives them good position on the field. North Launceston through Van Dam. Griffiths looks for body, Too takes it. Too, Too strong. strong. He just looked for the body. He yep. found it on young Smedley. And uh, giving away a few kilos, young Smeds. And Griffiths is going to look for his fourth. Yeah, just far too strong. Though. You saw it, didn't you? Bang. Yeah, with the, big with that backside on him. Yep. Just pushed him out. So Isaac might just, you know, if he's playing on him, might need to play off him a little bit and try and come over. Around the grounds, Kingborough 36, lead North Hobart 15. Lauderdale up by 15 points over Clarence. Good crowd down there by the looks. Griffiths Number kicks four. it. That's four. It's a nice start to the day. Yes, Dave Moore. Got some injury news on the boundary line. Tony Webb or Chris, uh, you got me there. Hi. Yeah, we've got a uh, player just been uh, strapped up, had ice put on. I think he's still on for the day. Uh, the trainers think that. Pretty sure. No, it's not Don Pick. He's right in front of us. Um, I can't see the number from here. 
We'll get back to you, Tony. To uh, do yep. a bit of research there. We'll get back to that injured player in a moment. Yeah, just... Uh, I'm going to go with maybe Bales. OK, we'll keep an eye on that. Experienced player Dylan Riley Macker. That, uh, that kick, uh, 45 kick, wasn't great, was it? Well, no, execution. Like, they're obviously yeah. one of their game plans is to try and get it back in there. But the execution, just uh, turned it over and it was it was good work from Van Dam. Cox Goodyear and co. And then it was Griffiths, just too big, too strong. In the middle, it's Kilby up against the Garnis. Lovely tap to Rocky Barron. Probably had more time to do better with that kick. Chaos ball. Riley. Handball's off to Ben Hyatt. Maybe he didn't have it. Shovels it out. And we've got a whistle on play. And it's going to be North Lawson free kick by the look of where the players are running. It's going to Mitchy Nicholas. His little kick to Bent's not great. Up against the boundary line. He has to get round Barron. He does that pretty easily. Or did he take it out of bounds? I think he did. So boundary throw in. You're confirming Harry Bales, Macca, with the injury? Yeah. Number four, I can see it on his chest. Number four, Harry yep. Bales. Looking like maybe getting a rub on, on a hamstring or lower leg there somewhere. It could be done. Taken by Gannis, dispossessed straight away. Fighting for the ball, the Blues. They're trying to keep it in their forward line. And inside 50 this quarter, 8-3. to three. The Bombers have been dominant. And uh, they're into the breeze, which is not a huge advantage, but... A significant little uh, Zephyr blowing towards the southern end. Out now to Roney, who gets a kick away. Falls to Leary, gets pace away from his opponent, takes a bounce. Kicks it inside 50. Lenny Douglas is under it. Can't quite gather. He's under pressure now from Smedley. Lenny Douglas, another fumble. Good pressure from Smedley. Now he's on top of the ball as Lenny Douglas. He might be penalised here. Ball. No, it came out the back. Sam Simpson, little kick to the goal square. Lee is there. Here's Griffiths, oh. number five. No. Misses to the left. Great work by Isaac there. Just, just kept the pressure with him and stayed with him. So we've got uh, Chris Sayer on the bounding. What do you got for us, Chris? Uh, you haven't. you got Tony. Tony, and yep. And it's Ollie Dean. Uh, oh, it's done okay. for the day by the looks of it. Oh. Uh, rolled his ankle. It's un oh, it been nice and sitting at. down. Okay, so that's a uh, big news for the Devils. Ollie Dean going down with an ankle. Just texting now, mate. Okay, we'll get some information <laughs> there from uh, Father Jock. I'm presuming that's who you're texting? No. No? Je Jezza. Okay. <laughs> oh, you're going to text All the right. coach. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, well, it was Harry Bales the one on, the, on, his, on his stomach, but I, I didn't go further to oh, Ollie big, Dean. So. Big fly there, but they're not taken. Short distance kick to half four chance for Sam Simpson. He overruns it. Leary, 40 out. Snaps on goal, Brandon Leary kicks another one for North Launceston. It's a succession of goals here in this second quarter for the Bombers, and that's the second to Brandon Leary. And uh, what have we got? 10 10 70 now for the Bombers. Launceston, three behind three points. It's getting a bit ugly, boys. Yeah, it is. It's, uh, I, I don't know what Launceston can do. They can't really shuffle any magnets around to, to try and put some cattle in different, different positions. Um, they've just got to just try and, try and stay with them. As much as they can. Yeah, well, uh, Leary, I think he was a bit quieter last season than we might have expected. Macker after that, that brilliant season in 2022. He still had a good season last year, but yeah. um, he could really be uh, let loose this year and kick a lot of goals for North Launceston as a permanent forward player. Well, they're, they're throwing Sam Foley around, and I think he's onto his third opponent. They're just trying to put him on the most dangerous, but... Um it's a tough job down there, Sam, and a lot of young kids. Kilby, it's been one of, one of their uh, ticks today, Kilby. Been very uh, no, he's, yeah, he's very good in the ruck. I'm impressed with him, mate. He's, yeah, he's, he's battling away, that's for sure. He's, as you mentioned, as the only one. Yep. He's winning the hit-outs this quarter. Well, on just an art. Oh, Tony Garnas gets rid of him. It's got to be a free kick to Kilby, and it will be. So Kilby, right in the centre circle. They look to lead. Long kick. The pink boots of Hyatt. Good defensive tackle there from Lockie Presnell. Kick inside from Riley. Buller. He's there. Oh, nice tap on. Clever there from Sulzberger. Finds Chug. Little U-turn. Gives it back to Sulzberger. Racking them up. Over the top now of the North Launceston player in Elmer. Inside 50. Wasn't a good kick. It was smothered. Here's Cox Goodja, got the handball from Lee, playing up forward, he twists, he turns, Cox Goodja, he now turns, he goes to the square, it's a mark, no, he's, he's dropped it there as the North Lonnie player in Sam Simpson, 
Chug tries to get off the ground. It's not great footy, Fozzle. <laughs> and now they just slid over the line like a rugby union try to Launceston. Need to cue the Benny Hill music there. Oh, but... goodness. It was tough work for everybody <laughs> concerned. There was a lot of calls of how far there on uh, Brad Cox Goodyear by the can bar. Oh. You, know, you didn't think it was uh, no, too far? Okay. All right. Now it comes now from Boiling. Burling to half back. Knocked away by Bennett in the direction of Sulzberger. He fakes the handball, then goes by foot. Inside 50 to Brandon Leary. He takes it in front of Sam Foley. 40 out, 45 degree angle. Now they're just not getting their hands on the footy. They had enough chances in quarter one, Launceston. But, you, you know, Gillow and Palfram, and they've really just stopped getting the footy. Yeah, and you, you mentioned about the, the misses they had. Maybe they kick a couple of those, you know, keeps maybe some sort of pressure yeah. builds to North Launceston, but they're just a class above at the moment. Brandon Leary for his second goal in a row. Shuffles in again. Let's fly. It's out to the right, and it's one behind. 10-12-72, plays three behinds. And they're just so well set up, aren't they, North Launceston? Yep. They're not going to let that ball out of sight of their attacking 50. No, they're just the, the pressure they bring just puts, puts, puts Launceston in, in two minds on what to do with the ball. Uh, Josiah Burling, as we mentioned earlier in the call, turns to the Blues from the Perth Footy Club this year. Cruises out of the defensive goal square. Nice long penetrating kick. Clears the pack to the wing. His uh, Kelp, boy from North Warrnambool. Paddles it in front of him, makes a contest of it, gets some territory, and sees it out of bounds. My old stomping ground, Foz, Warnable. Okay. Yep. The Hamden right League. Part of, uh, Hamden League, yep. yep. South Warnable, Warnable, North me, Warnable. Give me a couple of champions that came out of uh, that area. Jonathan Brown. Okay. Leon Cameron. Oh, gee. Quite a few. Nathan Warren. Well, <laughs> not so much a champion, mate. <laughs> There's a boundary throw in on the wing. Aganis Kilby wins the tap, though. In the Riley direction. Rocky Barron kicks blindly for territory. Out there towards Bales. He fumbles slightly and sees it out of bounds. Down there over summer, actually. Just drove through. Did down around that there? way. Yeah, on the way to Adelaide. Yep. Really like the look of Port Ferry, actually. Port Ferry, yep. yeah. Port Ferry Folk Brown. Festival, if you mm. put oh, it on the bucket list. I wasn't mate. there for the Folk Festival. No, but both the Folk Festival is a good time. Dave Moore like. Craig <laughs> Scholl from that way. Is that Goodness. Uh, Craig uh, He might have been more camper down, sort of that uh, area. Okay, away. right. I've got my geography wrong there. That's in Luke Hodge territory. He's around that way. Free kick to Jake oh, Kilby. That. He's been one of the best for the Blues. He's got a chance now for an inside 50. Get some scoreboard pressure happening here. Kicks to the pocket. Gee, that's a good mark out in front by Theo Ives. He's uh, going to be reinvented as a defender this year by the looks. Signs are good early. One Deep of the nicest guys going around, but then also one of the most aggressive and competitive guys you'll find. White line fever. Yeah. Gets it to Cox Good, a little chip kick to Elmer, who's been impressive. Handball's forward of the contest to Simpson. Sweeps it wide to Van Dam. Then forward again here towards Nash. Nash, little kick. Finds Griffiths once again. He turns and goes. Kicks to the goal square. Declan oh, Chug. It might clear the pack. And Chug off the ground. Makes sure of the goal. Yep. Another one of the Bombers. They've moved that from the mark by Theo Ives in the back pocket by a succession of possessions. Ends up with a goal to Declan Chug. And that's now their 11th goal. 11 at 12, 78 to three behinds. Yeah, it was the old coast to coast, wasn't it? And what do you think of Theo Ives down back, Macca? A good move from North Launceston? Well, he can take a mark, can't he? And um, we saw him, you know, at times have some good games up forward. We saw him play as a secondary ruckman. Of course, they got uh, Connor Young to come back. Now, whether he plays as the forward or the defender like he has done in the past, forward as well. So, well, the, the goal kicker there, Declan Chug and Theo Ives, have basically swapped places, haven't they? I mean, I know Declan's yeah. not a key back, but um, he was a big feature of that back line in the last couple of seasons. He was. Fossil. As it Tony comes Aganis, out. Sorry, you got. Down to Sulzberger. Inside 50. Running through there for Dave Gruber. Here's Declan Chug. He weaves inside 50 and finds his teammate in Sam Simpson. Simpson too far out to score. Touched off the boot. Not great. S um, Sam Foley intercept. Oh, it's going to be a more. free kick against Burling. Burling. And it's going to go to, as they come up. Don Pitt, is it? Don Pitt. Yep. One of your favourites back in the day, a couple of years ago, Fuzzle. Yeah. I think he was given an opportunity before he was in the Devils program to to uh, play in the seniors for North Launceston. He played in that opening game against Launceston at um, yep. Utah's last year. He did. So Dom Pitt is kicked one in the first. 
Cy Berlin just getting over the top and giving away the free kick. 25 metres, 30 out as he kicks. They've missed a few at this end of the ground, both teams, and there's another one. Missed near side. So it's 11 13, 79, three behind, 76 point lead. 21 and a half minutes gone in the second quarter. You listen to City Park Radio 103.7 and 96.5. Our broadcast sponsored by uh, El Gas this season. Thank you for your support. Little kick comes out now to Avery Thomas. Lovely kick on the breeze to the wing, taken by Kelp. We can't quite pick it up. Shuffles it in front of him, takes it now, shows a little bit of pace. Has to release the ball, though, only as far as Bales. Out here towards Bennett. Chance now here for Riley. Gets the handball from Jones. Riley kicks it inside 50. Roney's there. Taken there by Rocky Barron. Tries to shrug a tackle. He's caught right in front of the umpire by Max Roney. So the North Launceston youngster, the Tassie Devil, son of Nick, gets the free kick. Kicks it wide here, looking to Bales. Yes, his fellow number four in Ben Hyatt. Handball backwards now to Elmer. Now to Nicholas, who has space. Here they go with handball again to Van Dam. Over the top, gee, they're lining up to take possession here. Simpson to Avent. Now a bounce from Jackie Avent. The veteran kicks inside 50. He's got a few targets there. Avery Thomas with a good spoil. In comes Smedley. Takes it off Griffiths. Handball's to Kilby. He hacks it out of defence, but they're lined up here to put it back in again. Lee to Avent. Nice kick to Cox Goodyear. Off one step here to Dom Pitt. He's in the same spot he was about two minutes ago. He is. And he'll have another opportunity at goal. He may have learnt from the last shot. So great running <coughs> football again, Nathan, from North Launceston from halfback. Yeah, they do it well. It just looks like the wind sucked out of the Launceston. So, you know, there's guys on haunches yeah. there. They're, they're just looking a bit a bit um, deflated a bit at the moment. But, um, look, credit to them. They, they just need to, need to stick to them. I'd like to see Jones sort of impact the game a little bit more. Um, Hopefully they can change things up at half time. And... Dom Pitt. This is for their fifth goal of the quarter. Into the breeze. Umpire barely moves. Another goal, North Launceston. To the young screen, Dom Pitt. He has a little bit to say to Avery Thomas. As, uh, That's his separate. second. That's his second. 12-13. That's 85 to three behind three points. Kingborough well on top now. 30 points up on North Hobart. Close one. Down at the tip, Lauderdale by five points late into the second quarter against Clarence. Interesting, uh, some of our listeners want to know where Max Walker is today, Fossil. Apparently, you weren't able to come to contract negotiations on the... <laughs> you wanted the public holiday rate and couldn't get it. Is that correct? Don't discuss these things on I radio, Matthew. Rates, public, no, public, no, no. Do you not get the public holiday rate? Oh, I didn't hear that one, no. Oh, OK. No. Interesting. I'm disappointed you've mentioned it. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the oh, middle. Yeah, we've got to talk about something when one team's uh, 12 goals up. Yep, it's an 82-point lead. And uh, the Blues started the game pretty well. Had a couple of opportunities early, but it's been all one way since then. Van Dam inside 50 again. The dangerous Griffiths. Oh. This way, that away on Smedley. Against the boundary line with the right oh. foot. Misses. Well, Smedley right did inside. the right thing there. He covered the inside. Yeah, he and, tried um, to corral him into the outside, but he just went he one went way. He went outside, another. didn't he? Yeah. Okay. 12, 14, 86 to three behinds. Kick out from fullback. By Wooten. Nice long kick by the youngster. Kilby nearly takes the mark in the second grab. Yeah, Has go. the sense there to kick it forward to the contest to Kelp. Now it's a one-on-one here. Mitchell and Hyatt. Who's got the better pace? Mitchell gets there first. Hyatt keeps his feet. Swings it towards goal. Touch ball. So they'll get a stoppage inside their attacking 50, Launceston. Inside 50s for Dave Gruber this quarter. It's uh, 17 to 6. Marks inside 55 to 0. They're both the Bombers' way. So can they fashion an opportunity here, the Blues? It's a good crowd here today at Windsor Park. If you're watching the stream, you can see a lot of people in the background, in the back of uh, SUVs and utes, etc. Enjoying some refreshments. Enjoying the sunshine. Boundary throw in. Lee front position. Dispossessed. Out comes Barron. He takes the tackle on. He's got to release it. And you can hear there, nice tackle, Maxie. That's Max Roney. (laughs) Still deep in attack for the Blues. Lee with the tap. 
There is Kelp. Now it's with Stingle. It was a bit quieter in the second quarter. They work it by foot to the defensive goal square to Ives, who will leave from halfback. Ives on the left. Looking up and over the top here for his teammate in Douglas. Good effort by Burling. Gets the ball back in now by Seth Pfeiffer. Hyatt, that's Isaac Hyatt. Left forward pocket ball goes out of bounds. Interesting, Bailey Gillow, one of the prime movers of last year, a terrific season. We haven't heard much of his name today. No, Been I on the bench and came back on. He's gone in the midfield. There's Pat Liam James out of the wing and then looked like mm. Bailey went in the middle. Yeah, just really struggling to get the footy now. Boundary throw in. Lee. Oh, they get it out through Roney. Nice hands. Bales, left foot kick. Douglas. Get it now, Douglas. Good wheels. Wants to give and go. Gets it back here now. Over the top. Not a great handball there. Trying to go to himself for Sam Simpson. Liam Jones goes the outside of the boot. Nice kick. Hyatt. Gillo, there he is. Got caught. Back to Isaac Hyatt. In the phone box. Liam Jones. Got to go now. Great tackling pressure. North Launceston. It's only a matter of time, I think, that I'll turn this one over. There it is, Sulzberger. Caught, good tackle, Gillo. 360. Could have been a free kick. Down pass says, no, give it to me. Great pressure on the ball carrier there, Nathan, by the, the Bombers. They just swarmed the Blues with every position they got. Absolutely. They just, it's just, just that frontal pressure. They don't stop and wait. They just go at him and, and just force that, force that turnover or, or bad Lee, handball. Lee, umpires paid out a free kick after Lee gave it. It's going to go to Lee, I think. Yep, the Ruckman. No, he hasn't gone back over his mark. Give the handball off to Bales. So Lee, just on centre wing. It's been a mountain of a man in this competition since he came over from Devonport Football Club. He's done everything. Alex Lee, up and under kick. Jones has got to go and does. The ball yeah. fell very short. Burling was getting held there. Burling was held. Liam Jones is arguing against his own <laughs> teammates kick here. And he's not quite... He's a little bit confused, Liam. Yep. Liam just needs to know it's Lonnie's kick and play on. He goes short, Burling to pull from him. He looks to go over the top. Oh, they're going nowhere at the moment. Launces and Declan Chug sweats on him. Inside 50, didn't really have a look because Foley's in the best position. Good Does pace. he have the speed, Douglas. though, though? Oh, well Douglas, done. good tackle, Sam Foley. That's a good bit of play defensively there from Foley on Douglas because it looked like he was away. Tina McCormack gets a handball up. Foley could have been taken high up, I said, play on. And it comes out through the player there in Presnell. Great pace from Douglas. Even better tackle from Sam Great Foley. Great tackle. Sniffing a the goal there, Lenny, but yeah, well done to Sam Foley. Tigers 51 lead the Demons 15 at half time down at the Twin Ovals. And still a goal in it at half time, the Bombers and the Clarence Ruse. So 86 to 3 here. Aganis sees McCormack off. Hyatt, Isaac Hyatt, that is. Of course, his brother joining the club this year from Hillwood, playing as a small forward. Oh, he's paid deliberate. Oh, he's kept paid deliberate straight out of bounds. Bad uh, luck there to Isaac Hyatt. They play on now, North Launceston inside 50. Stingle. It's a nice kick. It, uh, hit uh, Chug. Chug through the head back. Looking for a free kick, not given. And you've heard the half time siren. And it's North Launceston. Fossil, give me the... It's hard to see. Mitch Thorpe's yeah. in the way of the scoreboard. 12-14-86. 12-14-86. It's a three behinds, three points. So Lonnie didn't score in that quarter. And uh, the Bombers, five goals, nine. So a completely dominant second quarter. Harvey Griffiths with four. Dom Pitt with two. Brandon Leary with two. And singles to Cox Goodger, Stingle, Avent, Chug. So, Nathan Warren, they went on their merry way in the second quarter. They were probably more impressive in the second quarter than the first. Uh, that's hard to, yeah, to do because they were pretty good in the first. But uh, kicking into that slight breeze, uh, they, were, they were really dominating the Blues, weren't they? Yeah, the Blues actually slowed them up there a little bit. But, but just the, the quality that they've got around, you know, they picked through by foot. Um, you know, again, um, I thought Blade Salzberger really stepped up that quarter along with Oscar, Oscar Van Dam. And we spoke about Jack Event, just that those senior senior campaigners, you know, those couple of younger boys are about in their 50 games now. So, so it's great for those fellas. And um, I think Kilby still battled away for um, for Launceston. I spoke about. It. I'd like to see Jones after half time um, get a bit more of his hands on the footy. I thought Wooden was okay down back. 
uh, playing his role. And Smedley, Smedley did some crucial things. So, so let's see what um, Launceston can do this second half. Foz. Thank you, Nathan Warren, for City Park Radio. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we're going to talk to the president of the Launceston Football Club, uh, Scott Stevens. Score at halftime, 12-14-86. North Launceston leading the Blues three behind three points. Back in a moment. Play your cards right with new LPG deals from Elgas. From LPG account credits, fixed pricing and carbon offset options, Elgas has got you covered. Go online, www.elgas.com.au. A sponsor of City Park Radio. Stroke can happen to anybody at any age. The best way to help someone is to learn the signs of stroke and know how to act fast. F is for face. Has their face drooped? A is for arms. Can they lift both arms? S is for speech. Is their speech slurred? Do they understand you? T is for time. Call triple zero. Time is critical. If you see any of these symptoms, act fast. Learn the signs of stroke and you could save a life. Go to strokefoundation.org.au forward slash fast to find out more. A community service announcement from City Park Radio. Community Care Tasmania is your local not-for-profit home care service provider in Tasmania. We deliver a full range of home care services with care and empathy. Our friendly, professional and innovative staff will tailor care to your needs. Ring 6334 0990 or 1300 722 400 and speak to a local or visit cct.org.au to find out more. At Community Care Tasmania, we put your care first. A sponsor of City Park Radio. You're listening to great TSL action. Tasmanian State League football on City Park Radio. Welcome back to Windsor Park. Dave Moore with you and uh, the team here this afternoon. And at half time, it's a big lead to North Launceston, 12-14-86. Uh, leading Launceston three behind three points. And joining me at the halftime break is the president of the Launceston Football Club, Mr Scott Stevens. G'day, Scotty. G'day, Dave. Good to be here. G'day, mate. Well, probably not the result you'd like at half time, but... Uh, you know, a lot of young players out there, a lot of players making their debut. It was never going to be easy against North Launceston. No, obviously North are a quality side. You know, played off in the grand final last year. And um, obviously, you know, they've lo- it's been well publicised. They lost their under-18s, but they've still got a good core group um, through their development league and seniors. Yeah, so they're putting on a bit of a polished display at, to this point in time. And, yeah, good learning curve for our young boys. Um, we're going through, obviously, a bit of a regeneration at the moment. So just blooding a few young boys and some exciting kids out there. We might talk about the future in a, in a little while, but uh, just looking at this season, internally, what, what are the, the goals for the club in this season? Now, what, where do you want to be by the end of season 2024? Oh, well, obviously, we, wa- you know, we want to establish ourselves on the field. There's no, there's, you know, we're not going to ho- hide away from, uh, from that fact. It's about getting some games into some of our young guys. You, know, you look at some of the young boys out there today that are only 15, 16 in the development academies. It's about getting some game time into them as we transition into a, a new generation of footy. And what do you think uh, you know, the younger players, I'm looking at uh, Jess Buller there, Rocky Barron, Finn Gutwin, etc. what do they learn from playing against a team like North Launceston? What do they learn about senior footy? Well, you learn about what the effort is required to play at the level. Um, you, know, you can see out there that, you know, how fit and strong the, the North boys are, you know, that are seasoned, you know, that have had those three or four pre-seasons under their belt but also the skill level that's required because if your skill level's not up to standard, you, you spend a lot of the game chasing your backside, the opposition's backside, which we, what we've actually had to, had to do the first half. Great crowd here today. You'd be pleased with uh, look, looking at the bar there. There's uh, a lot of patrons here and a lot of North supporters, obviously, and it's good to have this, this standalone Good Friday game, isn't it? Uh, just no other footy on, and uh, a lot of people take advantage of coming out. Yeah, absolutely. Good Friday is one of those days when not really that much happens. So, you know, it's, it's good to have that standalone feature here in Lonnie. We're blessed with uh, beautiful conditions. The ground's in magnificent order, so the council have done a good job and the sun's out. Uh, yeah, and plenty of people have streamed through the gates. Now, uh, you've got your under-18 side this year and your D-League and, and the seniors. Um, junior footy at the moment, what's your focus there in, in trying to build the club for the future? Yeah, it, look, it's, it's about trying to build a sustainable model um you know so we've got that you know that one club effect where you know kids can just flow through the junior footy club and into the senior club you know, and become lifelong players and that's something that probably hasn't been able to be achievable you know through the tsl because once players get to that age the development league's not a fit for them so they, unfortunately they, they leave the club so you know with this new model of footy coming in it looks like you know you, there's i suppose a pathway from yeah, from Auskick um, through the junior, juniors and then into the seniors. 
And we talked off here before about the basketball, the jack jumpers there, and what that's done for basketball and, and, and junior participation, etc. Can you see the the Tasmania Devils now that they're launched and hopefully on the ground in 2028? What do you see that doing for footy and the excitement around it? Yeah, look, I mean, the, the buzz and the excitement around the footy, yeah, it's it's fantastic. And to, to be honest, I'm not going to be blunt about it, it, it it's needed. You know, yeah. footy really does need that, that boost here in the state. Um, you know, I, I witnessed it in my own living room with, with my young fellow who doesn't even play basketball, but to see him jumping up and down, you know, virtually in tears the other night when they won, yeah, yeah. you know, that's the sort of, um, you know, feeling and emotion that we want to instill in our kids once the, the, the senior team, you know, hits, hits the footy field. But I suppose the challenge, you know, and it's been well publicised in the media with Thane and myself, you know, that's a generation away, you know, that, that's going to bring on new shoots, you know, through the soil. We're concerned about... You know, this level of footy, um, which is you know, 99.9% of, of participants in the state uh, aren't playing at the elite level. And that's what we're strong on, is creating you know, a strong, viable, sustainable competition for our, for our kids that want to uh, aspire and are, and are talented to play at that higher level. We don't want them you know, booking them first-class tickets to the mainland um, you know, to play in other state league competitions. Yep. And you've had a club meeting, or is, is there one coming up where you're looking at discussing the future? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there was the launch last week about the new league. Um, so the meeting internally with our club yes, and our, our, I mean. yeah, our yeah. club stakeholders yeah. will take place next Wednesday. Next Wednesday, right. It's virtually just to uh, you know, explain to them exactly what's been put on the table, um, you know, just so we're open and transparent. Yeah, and we'll, look, we'll make decisions on what we want to do based on what our stakeholders um, present to us. So are there any other alternatives than participating in the, the NTFA Premier League next year? You, you resigned to that, that's what's going to happen? I know you want too much away, but... It would be nice to have some leverage, Dave, but unfortunately yeah. we probably yeah. don't. Um, look, we're, we're really big on you know, giving ourselves you know, the best possible option to play at the highest possible level. And we just don't see that as the best possible model at this stage. Um, you know, we'd love to open up conversations with, you know, the NWFU, with Bernie in Devonport, you know, but, you know, that's a long way down the track. But, you know, we're running out of time, Dave, to yeah. be honest. Um, so, like I said, we don't have much leverage to negotiate, but, yeah, we'll do our best to fight the fight. So, uh, you know, while you've got some attention by our listeners on the stream, more details about that meeting if people want to attend? Is that for members only or...? Yeah, it is for yeah, yeah. For, for paid up members. Yes. Um, yeah, obviously people that are stakeholders in the club. So that's next Wednesday night um, down at the club rooms at six pm. No worries. Um, Mitch has uh, taken on the role again of coach in uh, two thousand twenty-four. Um, obviously, you know, I don't want to say premierships out of the question, but has he had to reassess his goals for this year as far as nurturing young players and, and where he wants the team to be when he when he finishes the season? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, when Mitch took on the, the role, um, well, obviously he had one year left on his contract yep. last year and, and obviously was a, a, a bit of a re, uh, rebuild as well last year or regenerate, I should say. You know, so it probably you know, reinstilled a bit more um, hunger for, for the coaching. He had a lot more of a, a senior um, team the, the previous years and it was just you know, a day-to-day management. But you know, it's probably reinvigorated his passion for coaching and educating and... You know, nurturing some of our young guys, so you know, that's obviously you know, the focus that he's been in um, over the last 80 months. Um, the outgoing president Don um, uh, signed Mitch on for for one more year to to see out the TSL. So, yep. look, yeah, you know, that's a long way down the track. What happens this time uh, or for, for the 2025 season? But Mitch and I have conversations throughout the year yep. as to his intentions, and um, we'll move forward. The players that have played with Lonnie in recent times and have moved to other clubs, would, would you like to try and get them back into the fold next year or in the next few years, do you think? Oh, look, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, And that's, you know, I suppose one of the positives that this new league um, will allow our, you know, players that have left the club to come back. And those players that have left the club, whether it be for, you know, personal reasons, um, work, family commitments, where they don't have the time to commit to, to the state league and what these boys out here now are, are committing... Um, they've only got the one or the, the two nights a week to train. Yeah, and it'd be great to have them you know, back at the club. You know, the door's always open. Do you think the selection of the six clubs uh, in the end was more a geographical thing? Um, I don't want to use the word zoning, but to make sure the areas of northern Tasmania are covered, so to speak, with junior development and up to senior footy? Do you think that's why the clubs were selected? 
It appears so on face value, yeah, and that and that makes sense. But yeah, well, I'm not really sure if that's going to be setting setting a couple of clubs up for failure. Okay, just my personal opinion. That's a, that's fair enough. That's what I'm after you, Scotty. That's all right. Um, the second half today. So, uh, what are you expecting from the Blues as uh, they come out, and uh, what can they get from the second half? Yeah, well, obviously, just you know, just looking at them to to just I suppose increase their their effort and intensity. You know, it's a hot day, so fitness will certainly play a test. Um, so just looking for our boys to continue to, to take it up to north physically, um, you know, athletically with, with their running capacity, but they need to get their hands on the footy first and foremost, Dave, and, and yep. um, get the footy forward. Now, for Blue supporters out there who may let their membership slip or you know, aren't members for this year, if they want to get uh, a membership of the Lonnie Footy Club, how do they go about it? Yeah, they can obviously um, just jump on the, the club's socials, so Instagram, Facebook, um, log in with the footy club there. Um, just make contact and we can shoot some information out to you just regarding membership or any any sponsorship um, avenues you, you might like to, to look at um, or any game day sponsors or, or even um, book out the Thurlow room like Chris Rising Builders have done up there today. Yep, I can see the there. boys up there enjoying themselves, having a few beverages. So, yep, thanks to any of our, our local sponsors. One last question, Scott. You, you've taken the presidency uh, from Don Jones. Are you looking at keeping it long term or what are your thoughts on, on the role going forward? Yeah, good question, Dave. One, take one year at a time. Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely one year at a time. Look, yeah. I, to be honest, I'm pretty busy myself, you yes. know, with my work and employment uh, and my wife, you know, she's a principal, so she's flat out. And we've got three kids yep. who, who participate in soccer. So most Saturdays you'll probably find me at the, at the soccer pitches and I'll come down, you know, for the last couple of quarters maybe um, and in the club rooms post-game. So, but look, a lot of the work that I'm trying to do is, you know, midweek, um, just trying to keep the club, uh, you know, heading in the right direction from a governance perspective, but m- most importantly, transitioning the club in the, into the new league. Fantastic. Well, uh, Scott Stevens, you know, great job so far, and uh, you know, it's only early in the year, but gee, a good crowd here today and a good spirit around the Launceston Footy Club. So, congratulations on, on a great start to the year, and uh, all the best for season 2024. Thanks, Dave. Enjoy the Jack Jumpers tomorrow. No worries. Go home, uh, get it all home, Jackies, and uh, that uh, game five. Thanks, Scott Stevens, there on uh, Skip Park Radio. Uh, we'll be back in a moment for the resumption of play. Play your cards right with new LPG deals from Elgas. Whether you're moving in or you're settled in, make the switch online today. From LPG account credits, fixed pricing and carbon offset options, Elgas has got you covered. Don't lose out. Visit the website, choose your new deal and sign up today. Go online, www.elgas.com.au. Elgas, local, safe and reliable. A sponsor of City Park Radio. You know what's amazing? This thing right here. Radio. I mean, here I am talking and there you are listening. And while you're wondering, where's it going with this? Imagine if I was talking about your business. Think about it. You've heard every word I've said. Admit it. That's the power of radio. It works. So let's get rid of me talking about radio and get radio talking about your business. It all begins at localradioworks.com.au. Do you like your music fresh? Keep up to date with music of today with New Brew. From rock to hip-hop, electronic to folk, blues to independent. Great music from emerging and established artists, including a tasty helping of Australian and Tasmanian music. Take a journey of discovery and expand your musical horizon with New Brew. Every Tuesday evening from 8 on City Park Radio. You're listening to Tasmanian State League Football on City Park Radio. Siren Sounds, this is you join me back here at Windsor Park. Dave Moore here and I've uh, got Matthew McGee. Nathan Warren, Dave Gruber on stats, uh, also the boys in the boundary, Tony Webb and Chris Sale. We'll hear from Tony and Chris in just a moment. Uh, around the grounds and at the twin overs, the Tigers 51 leading the Demons 15. So big second quarter there to the Kingborough Tigers, the reigning premiers. Pretty close one down at Lauderdale. The Bombers 29 lead the Ruse. It's Clarence 23. And here it's uh, the Bombers 12 14 86 leading Longston three behinds, three points at half time. Uh, looking at the stats, thanks to Dave Groom for the team stats here. Uh, hit outs to half time, North Austin 20, Launceston 17. So Jake Kilby uh, doing pretty well in those ruck contests. In the clearances, it's the Bombers 21 to Launceston 14. Inside 50 is a big disparity here. Uh, the Bombers 33 to Launceston 15. Also with the marks inside 50, 8 to North Launceston, 1 to Launceston. 
Free kicks, 14 to the Blues, 9 to North Launceston, and intercept marks, a whopping 13 to the Bombers, 1. And that, I think, was Isaac Smedley in the second quarter, 1 to the Blues. Individual stats, thanks to Damien Donnelly and Darren Lovell, the Launceston statisticians. Brady Paul from in 16 possessions, 13 kicks, sorry, 7 kicks, 9 handballs. Uh, yeah, 16 to Paul Freeman, 13 to Burling. Most of those, of course, were kickouts. Liam Jones with 12 possessions, 9 kicks, 3 handballs. Isaac Height, 9 disposals. Bailey Gillow and Lucas Wooten with 7 each. And uh, Michael Stingle with 11 possessions for North Launceston. So a commanding lead to the Bombers as the umpires come back out onto the ground. If we just go through uh, the goal kickers once again. Uh, 4 to Harvey Griffiths. Two to Pitt, one each to Chug, Avent, Stingle, Cox Good, also two to Brandon Leary. And, of course, the Blues yet to have any goal kickers. So umpire's back on the ground, and here come the Blues. Jogging it back out onto Windsor Park. Uh, Nathan Warren is at a little bit of a break, is uh, joining back on the commentary position here. Hello, uh, mate. I've just yeah, been... your body been doing at half-time there, getting some information I'm, on uh, Oliver Dean's I've injury. I've been trying to dig deep and trying to get some info on Oliver. <laughs> what do you got, got for um, us? I've got the great Darren Crawford trying to find out um, trying to find out some news on, on Ollie. So hopefully he's OK um, by reports from other people around. It just seemed hopefully just a bit of a rolled ankle. Well, we've got um, the boys down in the boundary who might have got in the rooms and get some more information. I think Tony went down to the North Lonnie rooms. Tony, what do you got? Any information on Oliver Dean for us? Uh, yeah, just as I said before, rolled ankle, ice on it, off for the rest of the game. I uh, don't know how serious it was because the ankle didn't seem overly swollen, but, you know, who knows? Uh, there's not a lot to him in terms of um, extra fat or anything. It's quite lean. In terms of what the coach said, though, he said offensively uh, he thought their overlaps were very, very good. They were using a lot of speed with the overlap. Uh, really happy with that. Uh, he wants them, though, to sort of try and come down the central corridor a bit more both through the midfield and up forward because he says they've got a little bit wide at times and they're just making it a bit hard for themselves. That could probably be told by the number of behinds they kicked in that last quarter, which was probably about six or seven, I think, off the top of my head. Five goals, nine it was, in fact, Tony. Hey? Five, nine, yes. I thought it was. Now, he talks about a grid, uh, grid zone type defensive system they set up behind the ball. He says that's working really well. He uh, said they're not quite getting the, uh, the rewards for doing that, but that will come, which seems a little bit ominous from Lonsley's from the point of view. Uh, he acknowledges that they're down on clearances a little bit, uh, which I think your stats showed around about four or five down for that. Uh, he says that's put a little bit of defence on the pressure, but they're coming good. But just to try and concentrate a bit more on that. And then he talked about their attitude, the image they were portraying when they come back on the ground. Uh, don't talk to the opponents that much, you know, you be serious about it. Uh, keep the feet on the throat and um, basically more of the same. Uh, here's young Christopher. Chris, who's been to the Launceston um, <laughs> rooms at halftime. Did you get in, Chris? I like the young Christopher, gee. Um, I got in, but not to the room. Of course, Mitch always takes his team into that little side room, closes the door and addresses his players. So I can't tell you what uh, the coach said. I'm sure he would have said uh, the game starts again. You know, the scoreboard 0-0. Zero, zero. We've got to go back out, treat this as, an, as a different game. Um, the, I've got to say, the young players are looking stunned. You know, they've just got their glaze in their eyes, and it's the uh, um, uh, the uh, older players like Riley. You know, just uh, 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 trying to uh, instill some sort of confidence in these young players. I can't, couldn't see any injuries that I could see, and uh, here comes Ollie Dean. He's uh, he's not on crutches. I can't see say his ankles that bad. Yeah, it might be just uh, one of those minor sprains, but uh, being Devils players, uh, Nathan, they, they don't get any chance of them, do they? Uh, which is fair enough. Let's hope they're just doing that, taking him off, Foz. Let's let's hope so. So yeah. yeah, it's a good sign that he's walking there. I think Macca sort of got a bit of, had a bit of a yak with his dad and um, swollen a little bit. Um, so hopefully, uh, well, there's obviously no hopefully no break there. But, um, yeah, and he'll be okay. Just on the conditions before we get to you, Macca. Um, oh, it's beautiful the, out there. I'm just doing a lap. Oh, yeah. Not yeah. Yeah. lap of the people. I'm asking the boys in the band. <laughs> it here. is lovely conditions. <laughs> um, as I said, it's good for cricket. You know, footy, it's too hot for footy.
Matt and sunscreen. Beautiful. Thanks, boys, on the boundary. Lost us at school the other week. Two thousand four hundred dollars to take twelve boys to Hobart for a game of cricket. Really, two hundred. It was cheaper to fly fly on a plane. Like that. That's a cost. Yeah. Like it's. And that's not no one's fault. That's not. No, that's, right. that's, that's just, just the transport is. cost of. Yeah. It's just ridiculous, you know. Yeah. And you can say that oh, we need players to play the top level footy, but the players are actually voting with their feet. Yep. Especially up here, that they don't want to play it. Yep. You've got the Heinzes left. You've got the likes of Boyd and Tatil and all them left the other year and Tyrrell and you know I'm not talking about the the. Yeah, there's the good likes of Joby Harper yeah, yeah. and the likes of, you know, Brendan Taylor. They've done their time. They've yep. done their time. They're off playing at South Lonnie or whatever. Yeah, it's the under-30s that are, that are heading You've got to want play players to play. And in yep. the end, you know, just because... I, I don't see this... You're going to put an NTFA banner on this and you'll still get the same crowd here next year, mm. which will be fine, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, I, yeah. I, just, I just don't know what the fix is. I don't think the fix is the Scottsdales, you know... In particular, Ge geographically, it, it, and it's obviously geographically, not but the communities, the communities yeah. aren't the same. Scottsdale community isn't the same as it was in the eighties no, and no, the nineties no. and early two thousands. The kids aren't there anymore. No. They're leaving. They're going to town to school. There, you know, there's no big business there. There's not, you know, there's no that draw sort of cards thing. There, that's so right. anyway, look, it's going to be an interesting season to see how it all unfolds. Um, we'll be here, Foz. We'll be here. We'll be here. We'll be here. I don't know who, who will be commentating, but we'll be here. <laughs> Third quarter action is Matthew McGee. My word it is, Kilby up against Lee. Comes down the front. North Launceston on baller in Stingle. Probably a bit quieter in the second quarter after an excellent first. Van Dam's been good. Good tackle. Jones dumps him on the turf. Gillo needs to lift. Get those balls in the hand of uh, the Gillows. Here's Cox Goodger from Chug. Cox Goodger sends a little sizzler down in front of uh, Ives. He's uh, just steamrolled at the end and he's down. It's oh, Griffiths. It's Griffiths. Yeah, Griffiths. On his shoulder. Shoulder, he got steamrolled by uh, Thomas. Ball comes outside 50. Good tackling pressure, Launceston. It's going to be a ball up. Yeah, sorry, not guys. It was um, Griffiths, the big fella. It's on his collarbone there. He seems to. Thomas be just, okay. uh, Avery Thomas just steamrolled him over the top. Over. It was all, uh, all legitimate, but he just hit him hard. Ball up right on the 50. North Launceston going to the city end of the ground. A slight breeze out there. Not a real lot. Gillow swung in the uh, 360. Alex Lee gets a quick kick. Let's uh, see what can happen. It's a good effort there from the big fella in Tina McCormack. Off the ground. It's another oh. goal. Another goal. Harvey Griffiths. The Griffiths. Well, they just couldn't get it past the line, the Launceston defenders. I thought Tina McCormack did a pretty good job. And Harvey Griffiths snaps another opportunistic goal. Three in the first, one in the second, and now one in the third. And fozzie has got a handful. <laughs> He's got five. Five goals, five. Harvey Griffiths. And... Uh, just relentless pressure there, Nathan Warren, resulted in that goal from uh, Harvey Griffiths. Yeah, he, he recovered did. from that shoulder pretty quickly. He did. Didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> He's popped up when the ball was in his area. No, and again, it's just, yeah, you're right, Foz, just that pressure. Um, and look, they're a young Blues outfit. They, um, they have, they're, they're having a crack, um, but just those experienced bodies and bigger bodies. Yes, uh, you yeah, mentioned Michael Stingle. He had seven positions in the first quarter, four in the second. But uh, he's going to be a really valuable acquisition. I can imagine him on the York Park there, those open spaces. He's going to cause some damage in that midfield. Up goes Kilby, wins it straight to Stingle. He's tackled, gets an arm free, gets a handball away somehow. Got Sulzberger there falling on the ball. We'll get a secondary ball up. So change up, they've thrown Isaac Hyatt in the middle to try and get a bit of bang out of him, I suppose. He's been a bit quiet today, Isaac. He's now around the source now. You can hear the wind in our effects, Mike. Just starting to get up here a little bit. Lee wins a tap. Sulzberger can't take it with him. Stingle can. Handball release. Back to Van Dam. Look away. Handball's a beauty. To Simpson. Now to Elmer. The boy from Devonport. Misses. Back to the back line, son. They're just, they're just second to move on, sister. Yeah. Like they've got a Ruckman who is actually putting in, you know, he's making he's the contest 50-50, yeah. giving him a look at it. But I was watching Hyatt then, you know. Stingle was gone on him. Yep. You know, he was three, three metres behind before he knew it. They just got to get on the move, set up a bit more defensively and stop that, that forward run through. It's a, bit like, it's a bit like what they're talking about Hawthorne at the moment. They're getting flogged at the stoppages but letting the Melbournes, for example, last week get out the front of the stoppage. Yep. You've got to you've got to have that sweeper there just to slow them up Catch a fraction. Up. Yeah, yep. you do. Ball out of bounds in front of the light towers there. On the uh, far side of the ground. West Tamer Highway side of Windsor Park. Boundary throw in. Kilby front position. Contested ball. Van Dam worried out of it. Spills to Sam Simpson, who's been impressive. Now to Sulzberger, who lets fly on goal. 
across the face. Sneaks in for a behind. Uh, 13, 16, 94 to three behinds. And we've been playing three minutes in this third quarter. Today's broadcast brought to you by El Gas for your LPG needs statewide. Talk to the locals with knowledge. Phone 13 11 61. Here's Matthew McGee for City Park Radio Sport. Well, Josiah Burling's stats are going to look okay because he's had a few kickouts. <laughs> this time he finds Thomas. Avery Thomas. 13 disposals to half time, Macca. Yeah. How many points had they kicked? 12. Yep. Yeah. Avery Thomas. Went to go right, comes back. Oh, it's a, not a great kick. There's good pressure put on there by Lenny Douglas. They sweat on him now. Big Tony Garnas. Oh, he can't get the boot to with the big three trunks. Oh. Avery Thomas taking in a tackle. And it's going to be a ball up right on the point of the square. Good pressure, Tina McCormack there on a Garnas. Yeah. As I said, the good mates. Oh, over the top. Kilby could have been a free kick to Agarnas. Umpire said no. That's going to be another ball up, I think, right at the centre. Oh, Kilby flew then. He did. Got the old third man up. Yes. Come up over the top. Ball up. Agarnas, nice tap down in front of Chug. Can't take it. Thank you to our listeners. There gives a toot. <laughs> and it's uh, going to be another ball up. So just sweating on it here at the moment, North Launceston. They're looking to get some clear passage through. That was Jones on the hands. Another tap through from Hyde, only as far as Van Dam, who kicks it through for a behind. Another kick out for Burling to come. Some of the newspaper previews, uh, big raps on Sam Simpson. I think he's been a really good player today uh, for North Launceston. That agree? Sam, yeah, he's had yeah, a bit of sorry, it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's had a, he's had a little bit of it. I haven't noticed him a hell of a lot. Uh, he's um, he, look, he's a he's a good player. Uh, short kick in, straight to Brad Cox, good job from Burling. Cox Hoodger plays on and kicks a goal. Easy as you like. And he does a little rub on the head there with Josiah Burling as he goes past as Bradley Cox, good job. But uh, that's not the sort of goal the Blues want to see when they're fighting hard to keep the Bombers out. And they've given away an easy one there. Yeah, they were just, it was just stoppage after stoppage there, the Blues, and it looked like they were out there for a second and just that costly bit of a turnover and, and it goes through with, with uh, a bit of credit great. on it, doesn't it? Uh, I like the fact when they had, you know, give the kick out to someone like Wooten or even yep. a um, Presnell or something. Get Burling Smedley. up the ground. Smedley, get Burling up the ground a bit as a target. Where he can catch it. Where he can yep. catch it. Because at the moment, he's just wasting his kick. Oh, it's a nice big long kick. Don't get me wrong. But is there someone else that can do that job and then he can become a, a target? Yeah, we got Presnell who's a nice kick. you got, you know, Foley's a nice kick. Wooten, obviously. Yeah. Wooten's you know. gone into the midfield now. On Salzburger, inside, inside the centre square now. Big task for Wooden. Kilby and Lee. He goes early, does Kilby, misses the lot. Falls in Lee's hands. He tries to butter up with a second kick. Goes to Gillo. Here is Wooden. The silky move up. Like the look of it. He go, finds Rocky Barron. Beautiful kick. That's what he can do. See, they want to go. He's going slow. He's going slow. slow I think they've slow, just got to energise this ball. They just need to get it in there. Because you've got Fletcher Bennett just dropping back now. Who's going to eat this up? If not him, it'll be Theo Ives. Mitchie Nicholas with the hands. Riley tries to lay the tackle. Jones is dangerous. If it sits, it doesn't. Off the knee, out of bounds. Yeah. Yeah, I think Rocky Rocky just goes there and gets it in while they've, while they've got an even number where they slow down and, and Fletcher Bennett gives them the plus one behind the ball. Um, Boundary throw in. Holferman and Sulzberger. Having a little bit of uh, how you do. Noah Jackson, nice throw in. Lee palms it down. Here's Barron, got to get it and go. Doesn't bounce well. Liam Jones tries hard. Elma, Harry Elmer gives it to Declan Chug out the back to Bennett. Bennett to Cox Goodger. Can't call him the coach anymore. Hand of the reins, of course. Going to be a free kick. Where's it going? It's going to be a play on. It's going to be against Smedley on Leary. Does Dom Pitt. Gets the ball inside 50, kicks to grass. Who's there for North Launceston? It's Lenny Douglas. He puts the wheels oh. down. Lenny Douglas. He's going to look. He's going to handle oh. it. Rivers. Joe the Goose. Over the top. Goal. Fozzie says that's six. Harvey Griffiths. Well, Lenny Douglas, doesn't he have some He's serious got some wheels? wheels? He does. He's in, and anything around goal. I thought he was going to put that oh, over the shoulder. He's, got but, a, he's um, a true forward pocket. Oh. He needs to, Nathan. There. We saw it in the second quarter. The only reason he didn't kick a goal was he had Sam Foley on his tail. That's right. He, yeah. Uh, well, Harvey Griffiths has kicked six. And hasn't really had to break a sweat for too many of them, well, to be honest. three of them just fell in his lap. Yep. So, six for Harvey Griffiths. 
We had, I had Douglas for three. You had him for five. Oh, for five. He's given a couple away. Yeah. But just once again from half back, wasn't yeah. it? Was and just that, again, I'm just going to go back to that slow play with yeah. Launceston. I think they've just got to get it in there and give their forwards a look at it. An extra chance. You've got them Dylan Riley, chance. one of the best forwards over the years, sitting down there and he just hasn't had a sniff. Round the grounds, Kingborough are well in, truly in front now, nearly by 40 points. 39, in fact, against North Hobart. It's on at Lauderdale. Lauderdale are a point up and they're just about to have a shot for goal. So I'll keep you updated on that one. Looks to be the close one. Chance for Launceston in uh, half back, although Ives gets the handball away to Nicholas. Back to Ives. Geez, there's clean by hand out of half back. Bales. Now to Van Dam. Casually takes a bounce. Has support wider from Pitt. Not a great handball this time. Pitt does collect it. Handball to himself, although it's over the boundary line. But just that uh, really hands under pressure, Nathan Warren, at half back by North Launceston. And they just get that clearance every single time. Well, look, they're down there, you know, and now they're, now they're out of danger and they're in their forward half of the ground. And again, it's just, yeah, just keep moving. They take territory. Bounty throw in. Kilby with a tap. Does it pretty well. Gets it to Wooden. Fumbles slightly. Ba- Bailey Elmer takes it off him. Ping pongs around in there. Now back to Elmer. To Nicholas. Cox Goodger under pressure. Hamble wasn't great. Looking for Bales. Connor McCormack. Backwards to Isaac Hyatt. Off one step up the wing. Clears the contest. Ives again. And all the way to Nicholas who's been fantastic. The tough back line has been just impenetrable today. Nice mark back there to Josiah Burling. Right on defensive 50. So again, they forced him into slow play here again. There's not even a free target to go to short though. No. Has to go to a contest close to the boundary line. Will spill off hands out of bounds. So they can't even do the chip around. No. Because there's not even anyone They're off just their closed, closed them all down. So what they yep. need to do, the, the long session defenders need to actually spread. Yep, and create some space. Yeah, create some to. space, drag the drag the forwards out of the area. It's, but they're just, just flat-footed. North Launceston by 104 points. 15-17 to three behinds. All those three behinds came in the first quarter. Cox Goodgen out of Bales. And that left foot. Oh, here's space for Max Roney if he can take it. He does on the chest. He gets to 45, gets a sight on goal. Oh, pressure. Great pressure from behind by Finn Gutwin. Just got a hand in, put enough pressure on Roney to get the shot to go left. So one behind, 15, 18, 108 to three behinds. Matthew McGee. Kick out here now for Presnell. It's a nice kick. It's a really good kick. That's what we're asking. Yeah, absolutely. And he's a beautiful kick of the football. He's found on the other side there, Connor McCormack. It's going to be a free kick up the field. 50 metres against maybe Cox Good. I don't know, but the umpire's having a chat to him. Anyway, they'll take it. North Launceston, inside 50s for Dave Gruber, please. David, more? Yes, 5-2 uh, to two this quarter. So not too many oh, entries. Oh, dear, McCormack. He tried to find Presnell, and he's turned it over. It's going to be holding the footy, and North Launceston going to go again. That about sums him up, Nathan Warren. Oh, it does, mate. It, yeah, he just... Yeah. Chug, inside 50. North Launceston Leary. set themselves. Good mark, Leary, over the back. He was first to react to that holding the footy, and he ran back into the space and got the space over the back. Did Brandon Leary and just the kick from McCormack? You can see what he's what he was trying to do. It's just the, the and it, look, it's a skill error, um, which, which happens. But Coach um, killer, as they say, there wasn't much urgency about it. Like he probably needs to punch that. Leary, punch that he has two, one in each of the first two quarters. This is for number three, Brandon Leary. It's another one. He's kicked it. That's three. We're getting to a cricket score now. It's going to be a tough afternoon for Launceston in this second. Uh, Half of the third in the last quarter. All level down at uh, Lauderdale Clarence. All interest down there. 36 apiece. Low scoring. Kingbrat, 73 to 28 up on North Hobart. North Hobart would be disappointed with that. There were okay. high hopes they'd maybe climb the ladder. They still might, but uh, of course... Pretty good King, side, yeah. Kingbrat, yeah. They've lost yeah. a few, but they've still got a good core there. Yeah, we played them a couple of weeks ago. They, they still obviously Lovell didn't play and Carter didn't play, but they had their full... And I think Cole was the other one. Yep. So the ball's back in the middle of the ground. What are we up to, Foz? How many? 114. 114 plays three. 13 minutes into the quarter. And umpire Nathan Geeson in control of play. Beautiful day here at Windsor Park. Nice tap. Comes out to Stingle, who just waltzes out of the centre. Takes a bounce. Sums up his options. Cox Goodger now. Spearing pass inside. 50. Leary! The extension of the arms. The elevation... That's a good mark. 
Might seem straightforward, but uh, he really had to take that at full stretch, Nathan. He did. Sorry, Foz, I wasn't on. I just, I just, I'll speak for you. I just yes. don't know whether Launceston really want to hunt. They, 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 just, they just don't want to hunt. Like, Finn Gutwin then just didn't want to hunt. Yep. Leary, that shuffling approach. One shuffle, two shuffle. Launches on goal. He'll have to come back. It and it does. Four goals to Brandon Leary. And North extend their lead once again. 17-18. And uh, that would be 120 to Launceston. Three behind three points. That's five goals in this quarter in 14 minutes. And like the first quarter, we saw effort. Yeah, absolutely. We saw effort. And look, it's so hard when you're 111, yeah. 6, what's And you're an inex- down inexperienced now. And well. you're young kids playing on, on men. Don't get me wrong. But you just want to see effort. You want to see hunt. You want to see... If it's a skill error, it's a skill error. Yep, but you want to that. see effort. And that's what we want to see from here on. Well, yeah. What we're seeing here is just some heads down. And, yeah, and heads down. And it, and just again, it's going, to be, it's going to be tough for them. But, but effort, effort all, you know, brings turnover. It brings, it brings a look. You rarely see a player waltz out of uh, the centre square like that with no pressure. Here he is again. He gets the handball away this time. Pitt takes his time. Kicks long. Leary again has marked that. Brandon Leary. This is a three in no time at all. And they just can't find a matchup for him at the moment. Well, it's not Lenny Faulkner. That's, not, that's probably not the end, no. Lenny Faulkner, who had spent some time on him in the second quarter. This time he's 45 degree angle, about 40 out. We're right behind this one on the stream and in the commentary. He's let it out too far right this time. You can hear the groans from the North Launceston supporters below here. 17-19-121 to three behinds. Inside 50s for Dave Gruber, eight to two. There's Josiah Burling. Spearing kick out of fullback. Jones. Lovely mark to Liam Jones. He rose over the top there. His opponent, Max Roney, and took a nice grab. Again, just can't go anywhere. He falls. He's just yeah, forced to. It goes for Bailey Gillo. Why not? It's work. Come on. It's done well there. And the 45 kick. He plays on. Gets away from Pitt. He has a runner in Palfrey Moon who can take a bounce. Nobody ahead of him. Kick short. Fletcher Bennett takes the intercept mark. I think that's their 15th intercept mark for the day. Just Harry Bales. Script. It's just the script. Yep. Now to Sulzberger. Yeah, he's got runners over the top. He goes by foot, though. Finds Bo Nash. Now to Bennett. Bennett to half forward. One on one. Nearly a mark once again. O'Leary has the recovery. Spins out. Thank you very much. Kicks to half forward. A little bit aimlessly. They might work it out all right here. Griffiths. Handballs. Teammate. Going to be a snap on goal. Sam Simpson. Another one. North Launceston. Wow. But what about the brilliance of Leary on the forward flank there and uh, launching it from half-back. Fletcher Bennett, the intercept mark. Yeah, the, the, the sentence, the script sentence ends yes. with Bennett, full stop. Yep. It's Bennett, full stop, go the other way as yep. fast as you can. It's, but just, what, it's the script. It's just... But what North, what North do, I was going to say North, <laughs> what North do, they actually, as soon as, as, soon as one, of their, one of their players marks it in Bennett or, or it might be Ives, they just spread. Their yep. backs just spread. We're not seeing that from Lonsis. And that gives the, the player a lot of options Absolutely. to release. Yep. Yeah, it was just... Like, they did well there. It was Jones to Gillo, Gillo to Palfreyman, and then just the turnover. Yep. Like, it was just... Yeah, I, it was. I saw Mitch Thorpe stride across the ground uh, after half time. Yeah. Is he an option to, to be a target in the Ford 50? Himself? The, yes. Well, he's on the team list. Yep. He's fit enough. Whether the bodies can succumb to a few hits and knocks... Interesting. Kilby, Hyatt, this is better. Wharton, inside 50. Pfeiffer's going to fall in his hands after he was second to the footy. He's tackled, though. It's come off. That's a free kick. Looking for it there. Free kick to Ben Hyatt. Didn't get it. Bennett. It's going to go out of bounds. Yeah, that was good, though. They got the stoppage. I like Wharton in the centre. Yep. It's going to be a good learning curve for him, but... He's looking nice uh, with that ball to boot, as you mentioned, Nath. Yeah, he's a lovely, lovely user of it. Rarely wasted, mate. He makes great decisions. Is he going to grow any taller, any bigger? Probably not. Uh, maybe not, but no. I think he's got, he's got the he's got the weapons to. Yeah. Can he kick goals? Or is he more just in behind the footy user? Oh, he's Leary over the top of Kilby, trying to get him over the big fella like a step ladder. They come and they go now. North Launceston through Bo Nash. He's turned over. He hasn't pulled up 
too well at all on high at their Bo Nash. Let's hope he hit okay. his head on the ground I there. I think he did just through the yeah, Isaac just sort of held that tackle a bit longer and his head's hit the ground. Don't want that one either for the uh, Devils. Uh, Bo's not it. Bo's Oh, Bo's out. not in anymore. Bo's He's out. out. Jake's okay. younger brother. His is. younger brother played yeah. well in the D League with he the did. fiery red hair. Turnover. Rocky Barron, inside 50. Eyes looking strong and big on Ben Hyde. Umpire said touch ball play on. There's enough time, Roney on the outlet. Roney, nice hands now to Bennett. Here's that run we're talking about. Kicks to the wing, not a great kick. Ends up with Boiling, who has a assistance there from a couple of teammates. Coughed up the handball though. Elmer to Van Dam on the wing. Here's Sam Simpson, kicked the last goal. Over now to Bales, in range. That left foot, Harry Bales. Kicks another one for North Launceston. Terrific footy from halfback again. Capped off by Harry Bales, who's uh, one of the big improvers last year for North Launceston. Big hopes for him this year. And it's now 19-19-133 to three behinds, 130 points. Macca, there's seven goals this quarter, you're telling me. Seven goals this quarter, Dave Moore. <laughs> Well, what can we say? We keep talking about that rebounding footy from half back, but there it was again. Oh, they just and they do it so well. They just yeah, they don't all collapse in. They they keep some width so they can spit those handballs out, and then they just take grass. What what grass is in front of them? A little bit of an altercation on the wing there. I think Josiah went on with a bit of a after a bit of a tackle there. But yeah, they... let's hope players don't get frustrated. Now we've got a player going off, and I think it is Bo Nash after that. So this will be interesting. On the this ground. could be a first 21-day protocol if it's can, you know if he gets ruled out. That's right. For 21 days now. Yeah. Alex Lee comes back on the ground. Is there already a player short? If you've just joined us, young Tassie Devil, uh, 27. Oliver Dean is off the ground with a what we think is a slight ankle injury, but uh, he's out for the day. On the ball there was Lenny Douglas. Kicks to half forward. Pushing in front of him is Declan Chug. A bit of stone out here. Might come out the back. Ball trying to be released. Umpire lets it go a long time. Ball up. 21 minutes into the quarter. North Melbourne and Carlton about to get underway. Have you seen Colby's first few games, Nate? Oh, Colby I think McCurcher. it's been great, mate. I think all the boys have, you know, the boys have, have started well. Riley, Colby, um, especially. They've, they've started really well, haven't they? Sulzberger, long kick to the square. Alex Lee, one out. Has to knock it away. Gets it on the rebound. Here's the dangerous Griffiths. He's always lurking. Gets it to the equally dangerous Leary, who lays a high tackle on his opponent. And uh, that'll be a free kick in the back line. It's like that's Avery Thomas back there. I'm not liking his socks up, Foz. Oh. No, it's a bit no. old school. Riley Sanders like. Kicks it now here to Tina that, McCormack. That the kick was. <laughs> <laughs> Tina McCormack back to Paul Freeman. He's the leading possession on the ground for the Blues. Trying his heart out, as you'd expect. Coming back from a serious injury last year. Plays on now. Has Hyde on the boundary as a target. Goes longer. Hyde there in front. Oh, Might have got a high it. one there from McGann. He took the mark anyway. Switches play nicely to Connor McCormack. <laughs> Nathan wants him to go. He for wants him to go. Yeah. He does go, but kicks it straight to Michael Stingle. Presnell it was. Presnell it was, thank you. Stingle now. Kicks wide. Presnell in the game again against Avent. Experience of Avent might win out here. It does. He keeps his feet. Measures the handball. Here's Leary. Inside out kick, Leary. On your side. So, so we look at effort. We look at effort there, and, and Lockie, Lockie did well, but then there was no there was no willing to chase. He's just, you know, he's just throwing the arms in the air and just walked. Yeah, 19-20 plays three behinds is Matthew McGee for City Park Radio yeah, Sport. it was good multiple efforts, and then it was just, yeah, let him go. But yeah, the I think arms in the air. Yep. Done. <laughs> Kick out, Sam Foley. Up and at him is Rocky Barron. Holferman, good on the ground. Here's Riley, first bit of space for the day. He gets it back. Go. He goes inside 50. Who's there for Launceston? It's Benny Hyatt. He's got serious wheels as well. He'll spin. He'll go. The boy from Hillwood misses. Well, good effort in defence there by Mitchell. Just put enough pressure on. First score since a quarter time. Mm. Goodness. We're looking for positives, Foz. Inside 50s for Dave Gruber. North Launceston, uh, ooh, what's that group? 12 to 6 in this quarter. So 12 entries for 7 goals. Bennett in the back pocket. 
tell you what, the old ice cream van was doing a good trade. Lovely weather today. Far side, Pitt. Inside to Mitchie Nicholas. Nicholas on the trusty left. Finds Cox Goodja. He goes quick by hands. The speed's on again. Nathan Warren gone fit to uh, Van Dam. He's caught high. That'll slow him down. But they're still going to look to go. Look at that. It's only a matter of two or three seconds, but they're away. Sulzberger. He'll turn. He'll go. Tony Aganis leaves it for Jackie Avent. While Jackie Avent's lining up, we might quickly get down to Tony for some news on Bonash. Yeah, uh, this is just a precautionary measure. They're not too worried about it, but they will check him at three-quarter time and see uh, see if he's right for the next quarter. So checking with me after that. Thanks, Tony. So Jack Avent, and, and that's all it is. Like it's you hold the ball up in the middle there, McCormack, or it was before. It's five seconds, yep. seven seconds. Yep. That was two, three seconds. Absolutely. So you still get enough time to have a quick look. Definitely. Then you got to go. Yep. Jackie Avent, City end of the ground, punches it low. No. Snuck it's it home. I think he has. It's home. Yep. He started it wide enough, and it comes back, and that's his second Jack Avent. So he's on the board for two. I haven't seen too many goals from Jack Avent over the years. He's got two today, and once again, it was from half back. It was the left foot to Pitt, it was Nicholas, it was fast through Sulzberger, Van Dam. He got caught, and then, but even when he got caught, he got caught holding the footy, and it was quick. Yep. It was go. Yep. He just, just had one little thing, and then away he went. And then uh, I'm not sure who took the mark on the 50, but he faced up, saw what was in front of him, yeah. energised that ball, get in, and, and away they go. 2020 vision, 2021-40 for North Launceston to four behinds for Launceston. 136 points. Round the grounds, Matthew McGee. Uh, round the grounds. Kingborough 80, lead North Hobart 37. And Lauderdale back in front against Clarence, a goal up late into the third down there. Tipping the close one back in the middle. Sulzberger gets a free kick. Play on Dom Pitt, takes a bounce. Little chip kick inside 50, fall short. Bo Nash back, on the, back on the ground. So it must be okay. He's got a high tackle there. Now with a little breeze behind him. Each TSL club have a doctor? Or is it like a head uh, physio? Like who makes the decisions on these concussions? Uh, at it's this up to level? the trainers, mate, at this level. Okay, yeah. so it's only, yeah, right. I know it's a big, ours, we have responsibility. And, yeah, we have doctors and physios at ours. And I think there's a long session have a physio in TAC who works for Zach, um, Zach Young. Okay. Bo Nash launches. Got the distance, got the accuracy. Another goal to North Launceston. Young boy from Devonport, Bo Nash. Gets the congratulations from a bunch of teammates who swore him. He uh, kicked that from outside, 50. 21, 20, 146 to four behinds. And that's nine goals. Let me yep. see, nine goals yep. this quarter. And we've still got uh, probably four or five minutes to play. It's a 26 minute mark. You're right though, mate. It is a big responsibility on a trainer, isn't it? They're just, you know, they're making the call for a start. And, and yeah, I don't right. know. Like, like it's, and it's okay it, to have these rules and regulations, but it, and it'll be even worse as you go down the grades. Absolutely. You know, like, you know, you, you talk about country Victoria or country Tasmania. You know, well, they, they do need to go and see a doctor and the doctor actually, so if they get ruled out to play, then yeah. like taken off the ground, then they've got to go and see a doctor and the doctor's the one that, yeah. um, but a trainer's got to actually tell, no, you can't take the ground again. Yeah. So if I go to a doctor, like say on a Monday. Yep. What are the what are the symptoms like? I'm, well, it's I headaches. Never, I never you, ever went hard enough to get. Concussed, <laughs> it's headache. It's vomiting. It's, yeah, it's okay. you, you know, still those, feel that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dizziness. Yeah. So and then it's going to be up to the player to be honest about that. Like, yeah, like headaches well, or you know, like you go to the doctor and say I haven't got a headache. Well, we, like well you say to the trainer. Honest, no, no, no Bo might have yeah. said to the trainer, "No, you've got fine, some sort of not, test." So that's right. They do. Well, there is tests on your phone. The, the tests they can do. So anyway, we're going off track here. But Tina McCormack. No, that's good. Good discussion though, because it's, it's going to be a, a big topic, I reckon. Absolutely. Especially come finals time, and yep. you know, when there's a bit on the line, doesn't matter what grade of football you're playing. Elmer centering like kick. That. Bales gets one from behind from Dylan Riley. Slow to get up. He does so now. Free kick. Harry Bales. North Melbourne have kicked the first one. And Harry good. Bales dummies around. Kicks it towards half forward. Cox good, just son in the eyes. Up against Finn Gutwin, who does pretty well. Knocks the ball away from Cox Goodger. Yes, Macca? Yeah, North Melbourne kicked one. Carlton reply. Had a good Friday appeal game. Hope you guys that uh, found $10 for the Tassie team put another 10 in for the good Friday appeal. Of course, we, of course we will. Yeah, a couple of million there from Tasmanian supporters. It would be fantastic for those kids over there at the hospital. I actually put 15 in. So no, you've got the extra got sticker. The you've got the extra got sticker. <laughs> oh, well. Bounty throw in. Knocked down by Kilby. Here's Finn Gutwin. He gets tackled by Pitt. Ooh, dangerous tackle, is it? No. Umpire says okay. Ball up. 
We've been playing 28 minutes, 21, 21, 46 to four behinds. I couldn't get the link to work, no. Couldn't you? No. Go. There you, you go, go to, one. to Pitt, who launches inside 50s. Is that Simpson, oh. who almost takes a mark? Off hands. Here's Avery Thomas. He's tackled from behind by Leary. Doesn't release the ball. Ball up, 40 out. So we're back here again. It doesn't get easier for the Blues as they got uh, Kingborough here next Saturday afternoon. Then Lauderdale, then Clarence, isn't it? Yeah, Clarence, I think so. Yep, yeah, like. they've got a, a pretty difficult and the run. Easy ones. And even Glenorchy this year have started to get yep. some good players back. Yeah, well, uh, Daniel Joseph, I think Jake Cox. Is he going back to Clarence? Is he Jake Cox? Yep. Or? Declan Chug limping away from the contest. So we'll keep an eye on that one. Looks like he's going to head towards the boundary. The other player, um, Harrison Gunther, Jordan not Hayden. Player. Jordan Hayden, I think, from a few of those boys have been playing up in uh, the Gold Coast area. Yep. They've come back in the quaffle. Alex Lee there with Jake Kilby. They work it out here to Paul Freeman. He's under pressure from Pitt. Sees it over the boundary line. Oh, well, it was positive to see today too that um, Lenorki had an under-18 side so play here earlier on. Yeah, and they got up. Oh, I think it was uh, scoop time about seven goals. I yeah, 10-10-70 to launch some 3-3-21. Yep. This is going to be a Dom Pitt free kick against Paul Freeman, was it? Yeah, Pelf threw the ball and hit him in the face. Okay, that'll be a free kick. Every day Pitt. of the week. Inside. Oh, 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 fly! Sam Foley, by the way. No, it wasn't Sam Foley. still down. To Jake Kilby? It was Kilby. Might be big kills. It was. Goodness gracious. There's a mountain hitting the ground. Well, he didn't take it, but it was exciting. He got up there. Anything will do us at this stage of the game, Nathan. That's right, mate. Anything yeah. like that. <laughs> Just well, the sun's little... all right, though. I don't mind the sun coming in. Oh, mate. here it comes. Two goals, 12 North Melbourne. Carlton, one one seven. Three-quarter time at the Tigers. 80-37 to 37 against North Hobart. Here's Leary. He's been dangerous. He's looking for uh, five. Is Leary. Going to be another ball up. Uh, where else are we? Three-quarter time down at Lauderdale. They're in front by a goal against Clarence at three-quarter time. A few afters down there as the ball's thrown up. Nobody's going for the contest. Out it comes. Paul Freeman working hard. Avery Thomas working hard. He's caught with the ball from behind. Their tackling has been relentless as North Launceston. Paul Freeman stepped up his output this, this quarter. He's, getting, he's starting to get his hands on it a little bit, which is good as a leader. They need a bit more. Oh, that's high. That's a coat hanger. Paul Freeman. Frustration. He gets Cox Goodger around the neck, who went down. Bradley's it's, kicked two. Get to the boys in the boundary quickly, Tony. Yeah, there's been a few players over here coming in just to get rub downs with cramp. Uh, first of all, it was Michael Stingle, then it was Harvey Griffiths, and currently Deck and Chug. That's like Deck and uh, Chug cramp. That's good news. Might be the weather on them, I think. Another goal to North Melbourne. Cox Goodger seizes it. The days got another one, Bradley. It's a lazy three for him. And there's three quarter time. Three quarter time for Tw Dave Gruber. Twenty-two Tw goals, twenty. It's uh, one fifty-two. One fifty-two lead Launceston. Four behinds. Four points. We haven't got our records with us, but I, I doubt whether Launceston have had too many bigger defeats than this, uh, especially in the, this iteration of the TSL. Maybe back. I remember they were the Launceston Raiders way back. I don't know if you were around that time, yeah, Matthew. Kenny Rainsford and yeah. Paul Bryce. Uh, when we had North Launceston, South Launceston and Launceston in the State League. I think they got some uh, pastings back then, but uh, this is a, a pretty win -win, big one today. 22-21-52 to Launceston, four behinds, four points. Yes. Macca, the goal I, kickers. I just checked my numbers just to make sure I would missed any. Harvey Griffiths with six. Brandon Leary with four. Bradley Cox Goodger with three. Jack Avent two, Dom Pitt two, and singles to Bales, Stingle, Chug, Simpson, and Bonash. Nine goals, six that quarter, Nathan Warren. So uh, we were pretty happy with Launceston's effort in that first half, but uh, they were showing series of, uh, signs of fatigue in that quarter, and they, they really let the margin blow out. Yeah, they, they had their chances there. For us. Young Benny Hyatt sort of running into a goal there. They had their chances. Um, they were getting their hands on it at the source. We had w Wooten getting his hands on it in the middle. With And I spoke about Pell from his output had, had picked up a little bit. Isaac Hyde in there too. Um, Kilby's, Kilby's just, I think he's probably been Launceston's probably best player I, that I can see. He's worked hard um, against what he's had to, had to put up with, with, the, with the Ruckman. Um, and then better plays, I think, for that quarter. Where the Salisbury's really picked up. I thought Elmer's, Elmer and Douglas started coming in the game that quarter there for North Launceston. But you can throw it. You can throw a hat over there, best the rug over there, best players as a few of them. 
I think you're right about Kilby. Like we've we've watched Alex Lee for a decade, and and he dominated games and dominated opposition. Yep. Whereas today, I reckon Kilby's done a pretty yeah, good job. Yeah, absolutely. Well, impressed with him. Hit outs at 34 to 27 yep. over the day. The yep. Bombers' way. So. And normally you see normally you see Alex Lee 70 to yep. you know yep. to five yep. or yes, something ridiculous right. like that in the past. So look, that's a good win. I just I don't know. You just want to see more out of your Isaac Hyatts and that. You know, he's played yep. a couple of seasons now, state league level. You know, he played state under under level. You, you want to see that inside mid. You've seen him, like, in, in better teams play as a high half forward, kick goals at North Hobart, yep. you know, whatever. But we want to see a bit more in the middle. That's right. Um, in particular, Palfreyman can't do everything. Liam Jones is coming out of the game. Well, to be honest, I thought, this, he's, yep. I thought he's probably tried okay. I just think he's more that receiver on the outside rather than going get Absolutely. at the, at the coal face. But it's just going to have to be effort. And this is where, if you're Mitch Thorpe, you say, you know, the old-fashioned, let's win the last quarter. Yep. We've got a little breeze. Let's slow them down. We don't want to see nine goals the other way. Let's slow them down. Let's let's try and take them on um, like they do to us. And, and let's see whether let's we see can win happens. the quarter. That's right. Let's Ma- see if we can win the quarter. Matthew McGee for City Park Radio Sport, along with Nathan Warren, Dave Gruber, Tony Webb and Chris Say. We'll take a break here at three-quarter time. It's uh, North Launceston, 22-21-52, leading the Blues. Four behinds, four points. Back in a moment. Play your cards right with new LPG deals from Elgas. Whether you're moving in or you're settled in, make the switch online today. From LPG account credits, fixed pricing and carbon offset options, Elgas has got you covered. Don't lose out. Visit the website, choose your new deal and sign up today. Go online, www.elgas.com.au. Elgas, local, safe and reliable. A sponsor of City Park Radio. City Park Radio is proud to be local, diverse and accessible radio. Just one example is The Long Lunch. Heard weekdays at noon, featuring the latest news, great music and local information from people living, working and playing in... Listening to great TSL action, Tasmanian State League football on City Park Radio. Three quarter time here at Windsor Park on City Park Radio. It's a 148 point lead uh, to North Launceston. I've got the stats here thanks to Damien Donnelly and Darren Lovell from the Launceston Stats Department. Yeah, Brady Poffman, as the boys were saying, he's the best at the moment uh, possession wise for Launceston. Probably, probably on the ground, 23 possessions, 12 kicks, 11 handballs. Josiah Burling, 19. Liam Jones, 14. 10 kicks and 4 handballs. Isaac Hyatt, 13, 5, sorry, 8 kicks and 5 handballs. Lucas Wooten, 9. Bailey Gillo, 8. And uh, Tina McCormack, 8. And Michael Stingle, he had a really good quarter that uh, third quarter. 9 possessions to take a 20 for the day. I think uh, the boys have split now from the huddles down on the boundary line. I think we might have Chris first up this time. Chris, what do you got for us? Yes, so... Uh you're going to hand it to Mitch Thorpe. He's very cool and calm. In fact, he's almost sort of mentoring the young guys to keep going and not give up and not throw in the towel. Uh, various changes on the on the on the board. The uh, the magnets are moving around furiously, so there might be a few changes. One thing about uh, uh, a lot of North Launceston players are coming off with cramp, but uh, Launceston rotations, there's no cramp to be seen. I think it's a telltale sign just how hard North are working. Even though they're so far in front. Here's Tony. Uh, he wouldn't be totally surprised by this, but Adrian's still not very happy with the defensive effort at times. He said they just dropped off a little bit that quarter. They uh, didn't go down the middle as much as what he thought they could have done. Uh, he still wants them to attack through the traditional centre-half forward spot and create the overlap, which has been working all game. Um, Apart from that, uh, he's just going to keep everyone sort of rotating around a bit. Uh, just even the defenders, he wants them to come up the ground a little bit more, uh, put a bit more pressure in the middle so the midfielders can get up forward a bit. 
Other than that, uh, Harvey Griffith is still getting rubbed down, but the others seem to be okay. Thanks, Tony. A couple of quick stats before we resume. Uh, clearances North Launceston 34 to Launceston 20. Inside 50s 49 to 21. 16 to 6 in the third quarter. Marks inside 50 14 to 1. The Bombers way 6 to 0 that quarter. Free kicks 17 to North Launceston 16 to Launceston. And uh, intercept mark 17 to the Bombers, 2 to the Blues. Hit outs 34 to the Bombers, 27 to Launceston. Last quarter action, round one, TSL, Matthew McGee. Well, the sun's come in, Foz. I'm going to have to put the uh, sunglasses on. Alex Lee and Kilby. Hyde in the middle. We noticed uh, a little move, Nathan Warren. Yeah, we've got Liam Jones at full forward, so he's he's made the out of the square. You got Lenny Lenny um, little Lenny playing. Sorry, Lenny Faulkner. Lenny, Lenny Faulkner, Faulkner playing forward. Avery Thomas up onto the wing. Lenny Faulkner will be a lot more comfortable forward than what he was in the back pocket on Leary. On let Leary, me tell yeah. you. Presnell, he's got the job now down back. Here's Hyatt, one of the ones we said had to lift. Here's Faulkner. He pushes the opponent in. Uh, Bennett under the footy. Faulkner will try and step inside. He's caught out on the footy, though. He now gets it out. And there's Wooden. He'll see it out. So, uh, and Seth, a couple little moves. Seth Fife has gone a bit deeper down at full back. On Big Tone. Smedley's still there. Where is uh, where is Leary at the moment? Is he off? Might be off for a spell. Might be off for a little spell. Leather poisoning in the third. He's kicked, what do we say, four? I reckon he's kicked four, what, four, four? Yep. Four, five? Here's Bradley Cox Goodger with all his experience. Van Dam goes really short. Only just 15 to Bo Nash. Back over to Bales. Left foot Sizzler oh. in over it. Who takes a mark. Has his legs chopped from under him as he takes it. But it was a nice kick in from Bales. Avent. Oh, dear. It's a chip and under. He saw what he was going to do. He was trying to find Nash. Good tackle, Sam Foley. And that wasn't great footy. It's going to be a free... Uh, sorry, a ball up. No, 40, so. 43 metres, 44 metres. Out from goal. Not sure what Jack was thinking there. I think he copped a, a knock to the leg there in that contest and was yeah, a just bit proppy. Tried to play on. Charlie Kuno kicks one for the Blues. They're a point up now. Here's Thomas from half back. Didn't really have a look. It's going to fortunately find, fall in the arms of Jones. Jones to Faulkner. Faulkner's got Riley on. Riley on the chest but out wide. He's been forced wide. Riley doesn't really know where to go. He's got Wooden down the line. He's the slow play. Jones takes a mark. Got no height inside 50. Not at all. Just, I was just watching Rocky Barron there, and he, he was a forward, but he was just like jogging back to goal and not even looking. Like, yeah. Good use of the footy. Jones finds Dylan Riley. Riley. Inside 50. Nice kick. Had a look at Jones. They're just trying to kick to each other at the moment, and that goes out of bounds. So you can maybe just trying to pick the player on the lead a little bit more. Just trying to control the footy. Let's see what happens at the stoppage. I'll hand you over to the captain of the commentary team, the 208 game SPC old boy superstar, Dave Moore. Yes, yeah, looking forward to the uh, St. Patrick's team against the OLs next week. That'll be a, a big one. At Prospect Park, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. Gallagher Park, sorry. Oh, new name. Okay, up we go now towards a event. Foley there as well. That's a good contest. Simpson, lovely tap onto Van Dam. Sulzberg, you look away. Back to Van Dam. Oh. Nice tackle, Jess Buller. Well done from the young 15-year-old. Handballs blindly, though. Back to Van Dam, who's tackled straight away. Just a little touch of class there. From young Jess. Might struggle a little bit this year to St. Patrick's old boys. Yeah, lost, lost a few. A few. Yep. Yeah, they've got a good little under-18 crop coming through. Lee, the tap out straight to Paul Freeman. 23 possessions to three-quarter time. Take it to a standstill. Can't play on the old boys over yet. The boys have still got it for cricket. Have they? Yeah, yeah. The cricket pitch is still in action. Oh. The pie clears the area. Kilby, who's uh, battled manfully, wins another tap. Van Dam sharks it. Here we go through Kelp. There's a little bit of paddling to himself. Picks it up now. Bit of pace. Out Avery Thomas, fumbles at the crucial moment. Got laid into, though. Free kick Avery Thomas. It's back quickly. He's got Dylan Riley. He's coming to the game in this last quarter. Third possession for this quarter. Waits on the handball. And handballs it straight to the opposition. Nicholas does the don't argue. Gets it to Sam Simpson. Been good today. Now to Cox Goodger. Sweeping kick on the 45. Hits Don Pitt on the chest. He's now got support from Roney. Long loping steps from Roney, and then the kick's good to Chug. Chug moves it straight away, chips it up. Aganis is there, the big fella's in front, can't take the mark. 
Small from behind. Now back to Big Agarnas. He kicks towards goal. It goes across the face. Which way will it bounce? It bounces pretty well here. It gets Douglas. Little chip kicks. A good one to Cox Goodja. Smart play, Lenny Douglas. I just... I'd like to, I reckon Dylan would like that um, <laughs> that decision he made down there to handball back again. Um, yep. Yeah. He's back in the back line now on the mark here. The Cox Goodju chips it to Tony Aganis all by himself. Mackey, you've seen him in his junior years. What's he like uh, kicking for goal? Uh, <laughs> the jury's out all here. All right, from the top of the square. <laughs> yeah. He hasn't had many goal shots. I'm going to back him in here, Macca. He's I'm so the... glad he's back playing oh, it's great. to yourself yeah, footy. He's a and he, great kid. He's a great kid and he played some ripping footy, I thought, you know, back in his school days and also those yep. Devils days. Yep. He's right in front of the North supporters, right in front of us. Weary sort of approach. <laughs> Does the Brandon Leary. Almost carbon copy and he kicks it out of bounds on the full. <laughs> Don't <laughs> laugh. He's sighed out torpedo. He's laughing himself, was, totally. Look at the big white Foley, thing, good mate of his. He's, he's giving, him a bit of a, giving him a bit of feedback. So quite start this last quarter. Someone like Sam Foley might have to play on ball a bit this year. I know you're going to you're going to you know, rob Peter you to, to rob play, Peter ball, to play but, ball. That's right. But you've got to get the ball out of the middle. He's yep. got the body to play in, in middle. Oh, big crunching contest there. You could hear that on the effects mic. That was big tone again. Four players just smacked together simultaneously. And we've got a ball up 60 metres out from the, long, the uh, North Launceston goal. No score yet this quarter through six minutes. Kilby to the advantage of Hyatt in a wrestle with Sulzberger. Faulkner takes it over. Macca, around the grounds, TSL. Around the grounds. Kingborough 93, lead North Hobart 44. Uh, Clarence are now five points in front of Lauderdale, 11 minutes into the last. And Carlton, 4-4-28, lead North Melbourne 3-2-20. OK, nice contest there. The young Kangaroos. Knocked out by Kilby. Van Dam's onto it straight away. Shark day by Foley. Torpedo. We love to see that. Out of defence. Unfortunately for the Blues, it lands straight on the chest of Theo Ives. Who goes the 45 kick. Misses the target. Here's a chance now. Ben Hyatt gets it to Rocky Barron. He's got no one in front of him. He kicks the space. And it's going to be all North oh. Rochester. Although it gets a pretty good bounce towards goal. Max Rainey does get back there in time. And he'll clear for the Bombers. He chased his own ball, did Rocky <laughs> Barron. He was the first Launceston player back. <laughs> Like one of those uh, rugby kicks. Rare yeah, rugby kicks. Right. Chase your own ball. North Launceston come out here through Cox Goodja. He's uh, well done there, Lenny Faulkner. As I said, looks a lot better on half forward. He does back pocket. <laughs> oh, he picks his pocket because Bradley Cox Goodja just took it off him with sheer strength. They come through now, Van Dam. One bounce, two bounces. Who's up ahead? Three bounces. Health just can't go with him there. Inside 50, Leary on the chest. Good work, Oscar Van Dam. Yes, Fozzie, we're looking for the handful. Leary plays on, misses. Well, I reckon that's 4-5 at least. That was just a little bit arrogant. Let's that's play on. by Brandon. Yeah. A bit of Brandon arrogance. Anyway, it was good play from Van Dam. And Cox Good, you just ripped it out of Paul yes. Lenny Faulkner's hands. Ripped it out like Jordan Crawford did last night against oh, JLA. It wasn't going to be a foul. <laughs> what? What's he talking about? Oh, I don't know, mate. I fell asleep. Oh, oh, the veteran Jackie Avent rises over the top. Oh, he's played a push. He has. He oh, has really? played a push. He's at his knee. He's, he can't push with his knee. <laughs> That's what he's playing. You're allowed to take a mark with a knee. Oh, okay. yeah, interesting okay. decision. I thought that was a fair mark. Anyway, Lockie Presnell gets them the uh, free kick. Gets it to Isaac Smedley at half back. The youngster plays on. Cruises away. Kicks long here. Rocky Barron's a target. Ben Hyatt. Ben Hyatt has a chance. He's up against three. <laughs> Gets rid of it to Faulkner. Gee, they're under pressure every time they get the ball on system. Here's Mitchell. He's cackled from behind. And it's caught holding the ball. So Lockie Mitchell. Not happy. He says, uh, not happy. He says, I handballed that away. Watching the Jack A. Vent call. I'm going to ask my umpiring supervisor mates up there why that was a free yeah. kick. <laughs> yeah, they're just right next to us. I took a lot of marks like that in the day. Just... Throwing the knee up. <laughs> now, Ben Hyatt, his brother Isaac, is lurking, but he doesn't give it to him. No, Brad was onto him there. So, Benny Hyatt, he kicked it behind there in that uh, third quarter, which was the only score since quarter time for the Blues. He's got a chance here. A little bit of a breeze favouring the southern end. He sets it out right. He's half a chance. Here he goes. 
Doesn't quite get full purchase on it. Lands in the goal square. Punched away. Faulkner can't quite pick it up. He does now. Two afters. Now oh. there's going to be a free kick here. Hyatt. You saw that Macro was looking oh, the footy. Just a little high. He nearly smothered the ball off the boot. I don't know who the North Launceston one on the mark was, but he normally uh, did it. Now Benny Hyatt. Declan Chug. Oh, in the there big, as well. The big men of two yourself footy. <laughs> Fair dinkum, Declan Chug. Get out of it. <laughs> Give me a free <laughs> kick. North Launceston's way after that. Yeah. <laughs> Lockie Mitchell gets to Declan Chug. Ooh, oh, getting there late was Burling. Put a bit of body contact on. No 50. Short. Now to Douglas. Been impressed with him. Gee, oh. he handballs it to Tom Pitt. It was out of bounds. <laughs> Don't think Lenny realised he was so close to the boundary. Two devils there. It's uh, getting a bit mixed up. Carl- had, uh, many goals this quarter. 22 21 mm. plays four points. Yes, Macca? But we said we wanted them to, to slow it down and stop the scoring power. Uh, Carlton by 15 points and still Clarence by five points. Here's Cox good out and Nicholas who gets oh, out of attack. No, he doesn't. Yeah. Liam Jones did well there. Yeah. Laid the tackle. Good mates, those two as well. They're having yeah. a bit of a chuckle. I reckon Jones has probably been in their top half a dozen players, uh, yep. five players at least. Had 14 possessions to three yeah. quarter time. Third biggest winner for Oxison. He turns it over to Edo Douglas. Stingle just says, get away from me, Isaac Smedley. Left foot inside 50. Leary front position. Good spore by Foley. To the front of the contest. Rainey tries to get out of a tackle. Out to Griffiths. Now to Leary. Will be under pressure. He gets out of pressure. And now gets a little kick towards Rainey. It's smothered. Oh, gee, a strong tackle from Rainey. Went high on Tina McCormack. A free kick to the Blues. Deep in their defence. Been playing 11 minutes, 22 21, 153 plays four behinds here on City Park Radio. Thanks to Elgas for bringing us uh, today's broadcast. For your LPG needs statewide, talk to the locals of knowledge, phone 13 11 61. Matthew McGee. Tina McCormack gives it to Desire Burling running past, kicks it down the line. Here's a Garnus, gives it back there to the uh, Harry Ilmer. Got it back. Gets it back again, Ilma. Inside 50, not a great kick. Another one for Dave Gruber. That's high. Yeah. Uh, he went to ground, though, technically. As soon as you go to ground, you sort of give that a little bit. It's going to be a ball up on the 50. That was Jones on Leary there. Uh, the uh, beautiful autumn sun starting to come around. Good racehorse back in the day, the autumn sun. Bet responsibly, of course. <laughs> Hyatt gets a clearance. Nicholas finds Bales on the square up. He goes even further. Here's Roney. If he gets it and goes, he could kick a goal here. Max Roney doesn't quite settle enough another behind. Pin the ears back for that one, Maxie. Just had to turn the shoulders another fraction. Well, it's been a different Good Friday clash, Foz, over the Yes, past we've seen few some years. close ones over the years. Seen some absolute rippers. A couple under lights at Utah's come to mind. Yes. Single kicks in it. A little bit different today. I think we sort of thought it could have happened like this. Hoping it wasn't going to, but just on paper with the amount of experience Launceston have lost. Burley, he's stuck. He's stuck. He gets out just out of the back pocket. He has to bomb it under pressure. Here's Elmer. He's coming to the game good in the second half as Elmer. One of the boys from Devonport helping out. Nicholas on the up. Over the top. Here's Elmer again. Continues to run. Hit up lead on Chug. Falls in front. Can't get it. Going to be a free oh. kick. Going to be a free kick. I thought it was a pretty good spoil yeah. on uh, Pfeiffer there. But it's going to be Chug. He's too deep. He goes to play on. The umpire says you have. He hit up. Good mark. A good kick. More so than a good mark. And it's Dom Pitt. It's probably still far. Here's Roney sneaking in. Fonzie spots him. Gives it off. Fletcher Bennett. Bennett. Not a great kick. Falls in the arms of Smedley. Smedley from half back. Goes short. Finds Pfeiffer. Seth Pfeiffer. Goes wider still to Foley. Foley handballs over the top. Gets intercepted, though. Came back the other way to Leary. He takes the mark inside 50. Gets the assist there from Sam Simpson. Big grooves are sweating up over here. He needs yeah, to get the jacket off. He does. Woo, where's your hat, grooves? <laughs> Brandon Leary. <laughs> Not the big fella. Seven. We haven't had a goal this quarter. We had uh, 14 and a half minutes. I can tell. 
22-22 at the moment. Hasn't been great. Leary for his fifth to join Harvey Griffiths with a handful. It's a good purchase. That's a really good kick from Brandon Leary. That's five goals to the North Launceston superstar forward, Brandon Leary. He'd been looking, hadn't he? He'd been looking for it. The fifth, he had a few goes. 23-22, 160 to four behinds. So, uh, yeah, tied kick there from Sam Foley out of defence. Couldn't find a target. Well, handball, I think it was, uh, from memory. And it came back the other way, and Sam Simpson put down the throat there, Brandon Leary. And uh, might just get around the grounds report there, Macca. Yeah, uh, Kingborough 96 lead at North Hobart 44. Uh, Lauderdale trail by, hard to see in the sun. What's that? Uh, 11 points now. Clarence have kicked away a little bit. And quarter time, it's 36 to 20. Uh, Carlton are in front of North Melbourne. I'll tell you what, uh, a lot of people thought Lauderdale, with all their recruits, would be the favourites. But I've got a sneaking suspicion Clarence are going to be there and uh, about. Yeah, I agree, Foz. I think Clarence will be the... Um Clarence will be the side. Roney, little handball away to Stingle under pressure from Jones. Just gets out of it. Classy stuff, Stingle. Handball away now. Further on towards Aganis. Van Dam. Little kick to the advantage of Bo Nash. Nash is the call. Now back to Roney. Oh, he oh, kicks it straight Mark. to the chest there of Turner McCormack. Now to Faulkner. Connell McCormack. Oh. She has a crunching tackle. High says the umpire. You can hear that one. Tough stuff there from Van Dam and Conor McCormack will get the free kick at left half back. He's looking to switch. Yeah, but there's no spread, Foz. They're all just standing Absolutely. still. There's just nothing to go to. So as usually, he has to go to a contest down the line. 3v1. And Fletcher Bennett takes the mark. He's one of the three. And the, and the one was Rocky Barron. Rocky Barron. He's like yeah. not even six foot tall. Yep. That's what I say. Mitch Thorpe is fit enough. At least provide something down there. Take a key defender like Bennett away. Ives. Short now to Bales. Had a good game. Beautifully kicked there to Sulzberg. Two kicks out from goal. He turns quickly. Looks for Aven. It's over his head. Will spill out of bounds. Maybe it's just Cy Burling. We've seen him play forward. Well, they've got a couple in the... Like, they've got young Rudy Schoenmaker and then um, uh, Caleb Brewer in the... Playing around in the development league. They're over... They're about 190-odd centimetres. So they, they do have some options if they, if they want to look for them. Mm. But if you don't have that, then don't kick it like that. Well, yeah. that's right. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, you're not putting it on Rocky Barron's <laughs> no, head, don't, hey? don't put it there. But that's right. he had to because no one was moving. There was no spread. There was no There was no willingness. From the tap out, Lee gets it to Pitt, I think it is, who gets a tackle straight away. Where's Big Coop playing this year? Uh, he's staying at the Red Legs. Is he? Uh, yeah, Bracknell? Yeah, staying at the Red Legs. Big Coop. Speaking yeah. of height. He's playing behind the ball this year. Oh, high yeah. tackle on Dom Pitt. Yes, yeah, some boys saw it. For those who don't know, Coop is Cooper Warren. Big That's Coop. Nathan's son. Plays with the Bracknell Red Legs. They got their big clash against Bridge North first up. Yes. Out of Parrot Park. Mm. Dom Pitt. He's kicked, uh, let me out, Macca. He's kicked two today. Yeah. He's a young Wand Devil player. He's one that uh, should have a good season with the Devils. Ah, uh, mate, he's been, he's been terrific, Dom. Um, obviously came in, got called in outside the squad last year for a couple of games. Um, due, to his, due to his season last year, he had a bit of a, a, um, a good back end of the year. But, um, yeah, I know he's, he's one of Matthew Armstrong's favourites already, Dom. Alex Lee takes a big clunk the front of the goal square. And uh, they've got the luxury at the moment with Aganis. There's a second ruckman to play Lee up forward. And he let out them with purpose. Not a big goal kicker, the big fella. But uh, he'd love to get his name in the goal kickers here. Waste no time. Right in front. Leans back. Kicks a goal for North Launceston. That's goal number 24. So 24, 22, 166. To uh, four behinds, four points. Y you think that'll be the lineup for the year, boys? Uh, Aganis and... Lee sort of sharing the ruck juniors and swapping up forward or swapping oh, off the so. ground? With, especially with Dino, obviously, he'll be uh, he'll obviously with his ankle being okay. A yeah. um, lot of devils and allies, and he's got academy games and all that, so he won't he won't play too many games, I wouldn't have thought. So, yeah, I think um, and it's not a bad attack to have. Tony's definitely um, competed well today. And he'll uh, just get fitter and fitter and absolutely. fitter. Absolutely. Like. He doesn't. He, he just gets around the ground well, doesn't he? Like mate. in any yep. footy he played, you go, "Geez, Tony, you look unfit." But 
He actually he's he just, just the size of he's him. He's like a tractor. He just keeps going. He, <laughs> he doesn't, he doesn't need to go off. Yep. No acceleration. He can't move him off the off the line. Like he's he's a big lump of a kid. Yeah. Might have some big news from uh, the bounty in a moment. Plays back in a way. We'll get to it at the next stoppage. Here's Matthew McGee. All up. Liam Jones in the middle. Tries to get it going. He goes again. Liam Jones. He's set up on though, and it's a good good uh, tackle by Van Dam. You've liked his game in the midfield, Van Dam. I have. Yeah. Yeah. He's been great. He looks good, does he? Good yep. size. Yeah. Good run. Good spread. He'd be loving it, I reckon. Having played, you know, sort of as a key defender as a, a lot defender, of the time. Yep. Defend, defend, defend. He's actually defend. A forward as a junior. Here we go. Inside 50. Leary stretches those long arms again. Foley will butter up. But it's, uh, it has to be a quick kick towards the boundary line. Roney. He takes it on the bounce. Roney. Inside 50. Avent. Well, the big forward in Avent. Interesting, uh, Sam Foley's down there grabbing some region. Oh, yeah. Uh, now, Chris, you had some news on Sam Foley? Sam, uh, yeah, Sam Foley came off a few minutes ago holding his ribs. He's okay. Quite, quite well, pain. He's, and he's then, holding uh, them again now. <laughs> the uh, trainer put some ice on his ribs. I thought that was it for the game, and then he's running back out there again. So, well, there you go. This might be a, uh, a secondary issue here for Sam Foley. Anyway, Jackie Avent going for goal number three. That's not going to be a goal. Just we've seen some goals missed at that uh, river into the ground. Staying on Sam Foley, but uh, no, it's, he's holding those hit, ribs. He hasn't even kicked a goal. It's a uh, it's out of bounds. So Josiah Burling tucked away in the pocket. He just went down Sam Foley on the sort of that kick. Yeah, not, if, if, way, if that report from Tony was right, oh, he's not a great kick. Alex Lee cuts it off. Josiah Burling was trying to hit uh, Seth Pfeiffer there on the way out in front of the can bar, which has got a little bit smaller. He's one player that can look forward to you lose uh, Sam Foley. Well, yeah, especially uh, with his experience and his uh, his good efforts uh, down back. Throw in. Kilby can't see it. It's up in the sun there. Neither could Lee. Here's Sulzberg. He just can't quite get it. Keeps rolling away from him. Blade Sulzberg up. Cox good. Just snap inside. Leary. Leary. Oh, you heard it. Here's Griffiths. Avent. Small forward, Jackie Avent loving it up there too, don't worry. Leary, they're dangerous, they're dangerous. And the umpire says, give it to me. Twenty-two 20, minutes gone. 24-22 yep. to four behinds. When long time, Launceston hasn't kicked a goal. See what they can do with this attack. No, it only goes as far as Leary on the outtake. North Launceston play there in Bow Nash. Fighting hard. Here they go. Let's get a goal for them. Tina McCormack up the line. Who's there? Riley. Good effort from Ives, one-on-one. -on -one. And the ball goes out of bounds in front of the North Launceston box. If you look now, they get yeah. that. They've got a plus. North Launceston got a plus two behind the ball. Make that plus three with Mitch Nicholas going back there now. So a good learning day here for Launceston. I'll have a look at the tape and I'll... Uh, I'll see what's going on. Who'd you say they got next week? Kingborough. Kingborough doesn't get any easier. And North Launceston? Uh, I think they travel south. I'll have to have a look at that. Okay. Keep commentating while I Will do. You get onto it. Not much happening to commentate, Foz. It stacks on the mule. Tony Aganis on the outside. Well done, Kilby. He picks it up like an on ball at his big kilps. Gives it over the top to Benny Hyatt. Over to Polferman. In those pink boots. Inside 50. We need a goal for Launceston. Is it going to happen? Hyatt's tackled. Umpire circles. Not going to be a free kick. Riley there. Max Roney there. Pick up Lenny nope. Faulkner. Rocky Barron. Is it Launceston's first? No. Nope. No. He's missed a lot from about 20 out on the run. Five points. Launceston. North Launceston, 24-22. Answer your question, Macca. They uh, head south next week. The Bombers to play the Southern Bombers at Lauderdale. Yeah, so great game. That will be a good game. As the kick comes out here towards Mitch Nicholas. Here's Faulkner's head. Mitch Nicholas takes it. He's in a lot of possessions today. Bo Nash. Handball not great, but gets it to Bennett. Back to Bo Nash. Now to Cox Goodhue standing still. Gets out of trouble as he usually does. Sells a bit of candy. Low piercing kick up here towards Leary. Picks it up beautifully in the bounce and slips over. Has to release the handball. Now to Elmer. Impressive today. Ball dropped there. I'm not sure who that was. It was Don Pitt maybe that uh, dropped the handball there. Hold and the he ball. gets caught for holding the ball. A yeah, free kick. Right. Yep, Dom Pitt. Isaac Hyatt. It's about the handball. 
24 minutes gone. Not many goals kicked this quarter, just the two. So you'd think just uh, two or three minutes left in this encounter. It goes four now to Tina McCormack. It's on the wing. Little wins for Mitch Thorpe, just this quarter. Just have a look. We were able to slow them down. Yep. Yeah, just the two goals. Long kick. Mark on the chest back there to Ives. In front of Ben Hyatt. He goes with a 45 kick to Cox Goodger. And here's that run that uh, Nathan Warren's been talking about. They all spread now. Bennett takes it to Leary. He's got a teammate here in Roney if he wants to get it to him. Goes a little dinky kick over the top to Elmer. He can't quite take it with him. Clearing kick. Four by Faulkner. Bad bounce for Riley. It will spill out of bounds. Late 30 minutes gone in the fourth down at Lauderdale, and they trail by nine points. Okay, so Lauderdale looks like they'll be coming off a loss when they meet the Northern Bombers next week. I was list- I've read the article in the paper today. Lauderdale have got a lot out of their best side. Yes. Of yeah, they from yeah. injury, and they're just going to build and build and build, you know. Yep. Boundary throw in, front position, Kilby. Gets it down nicely to Palfreyman. Half distance kick, pushes the call as uh, Elmer. It's the handball away now. Ends up with Bales, who's knocked up getting it from half back today. Handball over the top, just as if he knew someone was going to be there. That was Chug. Taps it on now to Griffiths. Gets through traffic. Swings onto the right boot. Inside 50. Clears the contest. Jack Avent jogs after it. Keeps it in. Over now towards Lee. Waits on the handball to Leary. Snaps. Just missed it. Now behind. I think it'll count. Yeah, it would have counted. And the behind yeah. will count. So that will be 24. 23, 167, North Launceston in the applause there from their fans in front of us. To no goals, five behinds, five points for the Blues. So 162 point win in round one for North Launceston. That will set up their season nicely. The Blues will need to do some soul searching. As, as we said, in eight days' time, they're back here to face King Brother reigning premiers. So we'll get an interview from the boys on the ground. Goal kicker spots? Yes, please, while we're waiting. Harvey Griffiths with six. Brandon Leary finally got his hand full. He finished with five. Bradley Cox, Goodger, three. Two goals to Jack Avent and Dom Pitt. And singles to Bales, Stingle, Chug, Lee, Simpson and Bonash. So the only casual we know of from this game is uh, young Oliver Dean, who's limping a little bit as he comes off. Tony Webb having a chat to him, so he might get some information there. But uh, also Sam Foley with some rib issues, although he did finish the game out, which was a good sign. So uh, we'll wait for Tony here to grab somebody to interview. The players shake hands. Good sportsmanship, played in a pretty good spirit. I'll run through some stats just while Tony grabs somebody. Uh, thanks to Dave Gruber. Great job today doing the stats. North Launceston, 42 head outs to 32, 8 to 5 in that last quarter. Uh, clearances, North Launceston, 42 to 24. Inside 50, 62 to 26, including 13 to 5 in that last quarter, the Bombers' way. Marks inside 50, a pretty telling stat here, 22 to 1 over the day, 8 to 0 in the last quarter. And uh, free kicks, 25, Launceston, 20, North Launceston. Intercept marks, 21 to the, the Bombers, 3 to Launceston. I think we've got Fletcher Bennett down there with Tony Webb. Fire away, Tony. We have indeed. Uh, close game, get there. Yeah, um... Yeah, I mean, it's just good to be back first round, Webby. Um, the boys have put in a, a mountain of work over the pre-season. And, um, yeah, it's good to get the four points. Yeah, your um, first half in particular, you did a lot of intercept marks. I mean, in the first quarter, even though Launceston didn't kick a goal, they still had about seven or eight inside 50s. And you did quite a few intercept marks there and just sort of saved the day and allowed the team to get the grid going into the spread. Yeah, lucky that they kind of just fell in my lap, but... Um, yeah, no, we were pretty happy with how we defended. I mean, they didn't score a goal, so, I mean, that speaks volumes. Um, yeah, overall, I thought it was a really good team performance. Everyone contributed, so it was, uh, yeah, it was great to see. Yeah, it was, and um, at half-time and even three-quarter time, Adrian was talking about forming the grid. Do you think you actually did that the way that he really wanted you to do it? And can you explain a little bit for our listeners what that actually is? Yeah, I feel like, yeah, I feel like we did. Yeah, we set it up quite well. Um, we haven't had that long to actually work on it. Um, we kind of sort of got rushed into it. Um, yeah, especially with the Devils boys coming in. It was pretty much just about yeah, getting them on the same terms as the boys that have been training this pre-season. But, um, yeah, overall, I can't, um, I can't be happier. Yeah. 
All right, well, thanks very much for uh, talking to us. Good luck next week. You're playing Lauderdale down there, I believe. Uh, that could be a little bit different. Uh, but best of wishes for the rest of the season. Thanks for talking to us. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, boys, down on the boundary. Great work today. Yes, uh, a pretty happy North Launceston. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, they, they outclass their opposition. But, uh, you know, I think a lot of the ways they set up the game, uh, a lot of their tactics, a lot of the way they want to play this season uh, was in evidence today. Yeah, we saw their style that they're going to bring, which is, which is fast and, and energised, Foz, um, and works really well. Um, obviously, a very young young outfit in Launceston that uh, nucleus of the group have never probably played, haven't played too much other than practice matches this year. So, look, they'll, they'll live and learn from it. Um, again, really good coach in, in Mitch Thorpe who'll, who'll, um, who'll really help those young, young fellas get the best out of themselves they can be. Um, yeah, I thought, you know, I thought Kilby was probably Launceston's best in my mind. I thought he just battled, battled really hard all day against quality, quality Ruckman in Alex Lee especially. Um, Jones, Jones was, you know, he was probably unassuming with his possessions, Liam Jones. I thought Lenny Faulkner had a great little quarter there. Mm. You know, he moved forward and, and he, he gave him something a little bit different there up forward. Um, and Josiah, Josiah and Foley down back, you know, were under, under a amount of pressure, but, but they stood up when needed. How do you pick better players for North Launceston? There's just so many, isn't there? Yeah, there is. Obviously, um, you know, uh, Harvey Griffiths with, with half a dozen goals and, and Brandon Leary. It's not all about goals, though, is it? I thought um, Fletcher Bennett, the, you know, who uh, just spoke to then, was fantastic down back. Um, Oscar Van Dam, he adds, he adds value to him in the midfield. Um, Blade Sewells Berger. You know, those boys, especially Blade and, you know, Harry Bales and those guys, they're nearly 50 gamers now in, in TSL, so... You know, putting games into them early is starting to pay pay dividend for North Launceston. Yeah, that runoff halfback, Bales, Nicholas, uh, Van Dam, etc., etc., and Fletcher Bennett. Yep, they just gave them wave after wave of attack. Yeah, absolutely, and, they, and look, and they do it well. So well done to to and well done to Adrian Smith in his first first coaching gig for the year. Um, yeah, yeah now, and then, I didn't tell you this pre-game, Nathan. And while Macca gives his, us his thoughts, you're going to tell me that he's coached one already, aren't you? No, no, no. You've, oh. got to, you've got to come up with a three-two and one. It's a tradition here on City Park Radio. Max Walker usually does it. So, oh, okay, all right. So start looking through those players. Oh, okay. Three-two and one. Macca, your thoughts on the not game? A, not even Max could give Alex Lee three today. <laughs> he normally gives Alex Lee three. Max, it's, it's his love child. Ah, uh, look, it was good to be back. Beautiful day. Good to see North Launceston with a lot of run. I like the look of the young blokes. Uh, from the northwest coast, in particular Elmer. I thought uh, he and Lenny Douglas will be busy once they get onto that uh, North Launceston New Taz surface um, when they're available. Um, of course, we're playing for the Phil Edwards Cup today, Foz. That's what we're doing here at the moment. We've got some um, some presentations out on the uh, out on the ground. Phil Edwards, of course, yes, we a great, should have mentioned uh, that today. Yeah, great. And it's um, just on the senior game now. Oh, is it? Okay, yes. not on the light. So North Launceston win the Phil Edwards Cup. A, a great uh, reporter for the Examiner. A big supporter of TSL footy and um, was passed away way too young a few years ago now. So they've played for the Phil Edwards Cup, which is what they're presenting now. And also, I think it's the Adam Sanders medal as well yep. uh, today as well. So Adam Sanders out there on the ground. He's here. Yep. Yeah, we'll see who he presents this medal to. No, so look, I was impressed by North Launceston. When you, when you sort of look over summer, um, Harvey, Harvey Griffiths. Griffiths wins the medal. Alex, uh, the Adam Sanders medal. When you sort of look over summer of who they'd lost, and, you know, they lost their main man in Simpson, who was their yep. real first hands-on-the-ball player, and you, you start to look and you think, oh, geez, how are they going to be competitive? But when, they're, when, they're, when they all got together at training and, and whatever, and you heard that they still had 15 of their core group, and then you Pierce add in your... another one. Pierce, Pierce is another, is another, another one as well. Yep. And you add, you add those young boys to the North West Coast in, and look, they're looking pretty good. Absolutely. They're no, looking they're... pretty good at, yep. indeed. So... A really good win for North Launceston. Look, Launceston, we, we sort of knew what they were going to be. You talk about losing players. You know, you don't, you don't lose the players they have in the off-season and then sort of rock up the next year and be competitive. Uh, you mentioned Kilby was a big plus. I, I agree. I thought he was great. Um, you know, he's a big, strong lad. He looked fit enough too. Like, he was oh, able to get around the yep. ground. He was still jumping at the footy late um, as well. But they just, need, they just need a little bit more from some of that next level. Pulferman can't do it all. He's probably their leading possession getter. Um, but look, they'll improve Launceston. They've got a, they've now got a benchmark where they know that next time they play North, they want to be better than they were today. Absolutely. Um, you know, but uh, yeah, we'll see where they go. Okay, we'll wrap it up now with a three, two, and one from Nathan Warren. We'll start with the one. Start with the one. Yeah. All right. Um, start with the one. I thought Jake Kilby. I've spoken about him most of the day, so I thought he deserves a deserves a one vote in what was a, a bit of a trouncing. But I think he he um, presented himself really well against quality opposition that we've spoken about. Um, so I gave one to Jake. Um, two votes to Brandon Leary 
I thought Brown, I know Harvey had got the medal there and he kicked six, but I thought Brandon's patch there, uh, uh, sort of in the, in the middle of the game there and late, um, you know, he, he was enigmatic and he was up and about. He could have kicked eight and nine. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, he was, he, was, he was very good. And three votes to uh, Oscar Van Dam for my mind. Mm. Um, on ball, he was, he was terrific. Deep as Max Walker. <laughs> Apologies to Fletcher Bennett's family. Goodness gracious me. Couldn't well, find him a spot. Was, Couldn't uh, find him a well, spot. Well, no, with only three, oh, mate. No, Max, five, maybe Max, 14. You're, you're safe. Might, you're safe, Max. He might have got in there. I think so. you're safe, Max. <laughs> Nathan, uh, th- thanks very much for today. Might, no, thanks, guys. Well, you know you've, you've passed the audition. I'll might, pass the test. <laughs> right, nice. We might get you back for another game. So, uh, who do I invoice? Uh, oh, yeah. No, no. <laughs> Loves an invoice. It's community radio. Right, right. It's all tomorrow. free. It's all free. <laughs> Loves it. Uh, thanks, no, Mac. It's been awesome. Yes, thank you. Chris Sayer, thanks to Chris Ball back in the studio uh, for getting us to air this afternoon. He'll be with us for another great season here of commentary and winter sport. Don't forget, next week we've got a double header of broadcasts. We're here uh, in the afternoon for Launceston versus Kingborough next Saturday afternoon, and then we're off to the Tornadoes. Tornadoes versus the Hobart Chargers from Elfin Sports Centre from 6pm or 5.55 to be exact next Saturday night. So thanks to all the crew here. As I said, thanks to Chris back in the studio. Stay tuned on City Park Radio for a drive program on this Good Friday. That's all from us. Final score here at uh, Windsor Park. 24-23, 167 North Launceston. Defeated Launceston, five behinds, five points. Bye for now.